Hi, I'm Mike Singletary. The other Mike Singletary, owner of Singletary's Furniture. Whether looking for the perfect piece or an entire room, Singletary's large inventory of quality brands makes shopping easy. Our friendly staff will gladly assist you with decorating ideas, financing, and free delivery in the area. And everyday low prices and customer satisfaction is always our goal. Price, selection, and quality are very important at Singletary's Furniture. And we got prices you can bear. Welcome again to Kangaroo Football 1999. A great victory last Friday night as we traveled to Springtown, the defending District 8-4A champions, a team rich in tradition through the 90s in high school football, been to the playoffs almost every year, and were able to defeat uh, the Porcupines uh, rather handily, uh, 42 to nothing, the final score. Very, very proud of our football team. We talked to them all week about Springtown's ability to hammer away at you offensively and how big they and physical they were up front on defense. and. Just very, very proud of our football team, particularly our, our offensive and defensive fronts for the job they did against an outsized Springtown team. But uh, certainly we were able to uh, move the ball pretty well offensively. And Mark Pierce had another great night. Uh, Zach Moore, Garrett Hudson all uh, turned in really outstanding performances. And of course, that's always due to the men up front, the guys that do the job for us up front. We challenged our football team all week with the thought that to be able to become champions, you have to defeat the, the defending champion. And we were able to do that, and so uh, certainly our, our guys are very confident right now, very uh, excited about uh, what lies ahead, and uh, it was just a great victory for us as we traveled to Springtown. Uh, a few other highlights of, of the game uh, before you uh, get to enjoy it and uh, watch it again. Uh, I know that uh, Mark Pierce, in, in going over 200 yards again and scoring a, a what was his 20th touchdown of the season, and, and uh, again, we're, we know that any time that happens, uh, a lot of good things are happening in front of Mark as well as, he, as him doing an outstanding job for us. Uh, Zach Moore had another really outstanding night rushing the football. We threw the ball a little bit more. Zach threw the ball well, and I think that uh, Garrett Hudson turned in a, a, an outstanding performance both blocking and, and running and receiving the football. So it was a, another good night for us, a good night of balance as far as uh, all three of those backs being able to rush the football effectively. Uh, we were able also to, to execute well in our kicking game. Uh, Jeremy McClure uh, missed one extra point but uh, hit all of the others and did an outstanding job kicking the football for us. Uh, Garrett punted well. Uh, we had a punt return by Colt uh, Borland that uh, was a big play in the ball game for us. Uh, so offensively and, and kicking teams uh, certainly did well, and, and our defense, man, what an outstanding job the defense did uh, again this week, limiting uh, them to not nearly as many yards as we've been giving up, but the most important thing, the most important defensive statistic always is the fact that they did not get in the end zone this week. Our first shutout of the season, uh, the previous four weeks, I think we had held uh, all of our opponents to one touchdown or, or less. And this week we finally got that shutout that the defense had been uh, wanting so, so badly and, and so very, very proud of the way the defensive team played as well. Uh, not only did we play well uh, against the run, but we had an, an interception, uh, had a couple other big plays in the passing game, and so very pleased with the overall performance of our defensive football team. Uh, you know, anytime you're able to shut a team out and score over 40 points, uh, you have to feel good about uh, what your football team did, and, and certainly we do, and we know our players do. The only thing that we, we are a little bit uh, concerned about right now is we don't want to be satisfied because this football team has a lot of uh, growing up to do still. They have a lot of improvement that can be made, and I know that if they continue with the intensity and continue to improve, this could be a very, very special season for Kangaroo football. So we just hope that we don't dare become complacent and satisfied with what they have accomplished at this point. Really, all they've done, all we have done as a football team is put ourselves in position to now battle for the district championship these next two weeks as we play Boswell this coming Friday night here at Kangaroo Stadium, Boswell 3-1 in the district. And then the next week, we'll travel to Azel, who is also 3-1 in the district. So these next two weeks really give our football team an opportunity to play for the 1999 District 8-4A Championship. I know Hi, I'm Mike Singletary of Singletary's Furniture. You know there's only one thing more relaxing than fishing, and that's kicking back in a good recliner. At Singletary's Furniture, we have a full selection of top quality recliners, 
such as Flex Steel, Best Chairs, Ashley, and Lazy Boy. Come by and see how great these recliners are, because once you sit in them, you're never going to want to get out of them. Catch the big savings at Singletary's Furniture, 1215 Highway 180 West in Weatherford. A quick injury update. Uh, we had Daryl Clay who went out in the game uh, last week against Springtown, sprained an ankle, and we anticipate Daryl being able to be back and play this week. He won't be quite full speed for a day or two in practice with his ankle sprain, but we uh, know that Doc and Corey will do a good job in rehabbing him and getting him back as quickly as possible. Uh, I know Jared Tidwell was disappointed last week. We had hoped that Jared would be able to play last week, but still had a little discomfort in his, uh, with his broken arm, but we hope that with another week's rest now and another uh, week for that bone to heal, that he will be able to play this week, and we would certainly welcome him back uh, with open arms. We need Jared back in the lineup. Uh, no other uh, major injuries last week, so uh, we're going to be closer to full strength uh, this coming week with uh, Jared's return, hopefully, than we've been at any other time in the season. And that's just the right time as we get ready to battle for the district championship against Boswell here this coming Friday night, 7.30, uh, here at Kangaroo Stadium. I know that one of the, the most thrilling things that a young person can experience is to play in a game like this, and one of the things that makes it so thrilling is to have a large crowd on hand, a very enthusiastic crowd that is pulling for, for their team uh, to, to claim that district championship that has uh, kind of escaped Weatherford for many, many years now, and we need to, we need to earn one, get one back here, and, and put us in a position going into the playoffs with a lot of momentum, a lot of confidence, and that's certainly our goal, and hopefully uh, you will be here Friday night to, to help that happen, to help make that happen, as the home crowd advantage is so very, very important in a game like this. So please come join us, and we need you, and uh, look forward to all the excitement and thrills that a district championship battle has to offer this Friday night. I'm Mike Singletary. Everyone knows I love to rough it in the great outdoors. But sometimes it's hard to get a good night's rest sleeping on this hard ground. I sure miss my Sealy mattress. Where'd you like the new mattress, Mr. Singletary? Just put it in the tent. Come check out a wide selection of fine Sealy mattresses at everyday low prices at Singletary's Furniture. Dad, Mom said it's time to come in for supper. <laughs> The following is a nothing but sports production. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Tallman and it's Weatherford Kangaroo time here at Nothing But Sports. But first, NBSP and our sponsors would like to say congratulations to you, the players and coaches participating in today's game. In the spirit of competition, we encourage you to play hard, play fair, and respect your opponent. You'll be cool if you do, and I want you to take care of your game tape. 30 years from now, it might be the most valuable video you own. Now, before the battle begins, let's take a look at the teams and the athletes and the coaches coming up in today's game. Hello, everyone. I'm Sean McGuinn for Nothing But Sports Productions. Today's game will be at Porcupine Stadium in Springtown for a District 8-4A game between the visiting Weatherford Kangaroos and the home team, Springtown Porcupines. The Weatherford Kangaroos come in with a season record of five wins against only one loss. Offensively, the Weatherford Kangaroos average 320 yards rushing per game, 48 yards passing, for a total of 368 yards per game on offense, while scoring an average of 27 points per game. Defensively, Weatherford is allowing an average of 179 rushing yards per game and 121 passing yards per game, while giving up only 15 points per game on the season. Here's what head coach Larry McBroom had to say about his upcoming opponent, the Springtown Porcupines. He said they have outstanding offensive line play and a big, strong fullback. Those are the strengths of the Porcupines. They also have an aggressive, hard-hitting defense. He says our offense must establish the threat of a passing game and give our running game room to go. Our offensive line must continue its dominant play. 
defensively, he said any triple option offense starts with a good fullback, and the Porcupines have a really good one. We must stop him early to make them throw the ball. That's the keys to the game by head coach Larry McBroom. It looks to be an exciting battle between these two powerhouses coming up right here on NBSP. We'll be back in a moment with nothing but sports player profiles for a close-up look at the players and coaches. Stay with us. Honey, can you pay these bills? It won't take you very long if you use Texas Banker Online. Sure. Girls, I'll be right back. Texas Banker Online, a simple and secure way to bank over the internet with no service charge. Now you can pay bills quickly and conveniently from the comfort of your own home with Texas Banker Online. That was quick. Yeah, that Texas Banker Online is really simple. Whose turn is it anyways? Texas Banker Online, a product from Texas Bank. Plug in now. They dress him up like a ghost and he's looking through and it's Halloween and he's walking around like this. My parents told me to go swimming and I was like, no. You love watching movies and Blockbuster thinks you should be rewarded for that with Blockbuster Rewards, where the more movies you rent, the more free ones you get. Plus, get a free Blockbuster Favorites movie every month. He got on top of that bomb just like it was a horse. He was going to ride that rascal all right on into where it was going. Join Blockbuster Rewards today and go home happy. Welcome back, everybody. Now let's take a personal look at NBSP Scouting Report and discover who's wearing the uniforms and what really makes them click and tick. Now let's take a look at Shane Weeks. He's number 22, 5'8", 143 pounds for the weather for kangaroos. We asked him what his favorite academic subject is. That's aviation. His hobbies and interests include boxing, military stuff, cars, and paintball. Some of his career future goals are to be a United States Navy SEAL or a pilot. We asked him what he would do to be a champion. He said he'll devote all possible time to the team. His boxing is almost over, so he'll have more time to spend with the team and he can start gaining weight. That's Shane Weeks of the Weatherford Kangaroos. Now, let's take a look at number 45 for the weather for kangaroos. That's Boyd Weaver, 5'8", 175 pounds senior. We asked him what some of his hobbies and interests are. He said cars and physical activities. His future career goals in life are to be an eye doctor, go to the Air Force Academy, and then medical school. We asked him what he would do to be a champion. He said work hard and learn his assignments. That's Boyd Weaver, number 45 of the weather for kangaroos. Let's take a look at number 81, Casey Cook of the Weather for Kangaroos, 5'8", 152 pound senior. His interests and hobbies include baseball, football, hunting, fishing, and swimming. We asked him what he would do to be a champion. He said give 110% effort all the time to get bigger, stronger, and faster. His career goals include going to college and hopefully playing pro ball somewhere. That's Casey Cook of the Weather for Kangaroos. Now it's time to take a look at this week's NBSB Coaches Spotlight. David Beninati, he's the defensive line coach and the tight ends coach for the Weatherford Kangaroos. He was the defensive line coach at Ada High School in Oklahoma for one year, and now he's in his second year at Weatherford High School. In his playing days, he was a two-time state champion on the 4A football team at Ada, Oklahoma, a one-time state champion in the heavyweight wrestling, and he also competed in the Oklahoma Tough Man Championship. And he also was in the NAIA National Championship game for East Central University. His major in college was history, and his hobby is fishing. His most memorable moment in his sports career as a coach or player, well, it was winning the NAIA National Championship in football in 1993 for East Central University. That's David Beninati, Defensive line coach and tight ends coach for the Weatherford Kangaroos. Today's game is being brought to you by Texas Bank. With us, it's personal. 
and by the new car dealers, backing the Rue crew in 99. That concludes this week's NBSP scouting reports, and we'll be back in a moment on location with the big showdown. Stay with us. Sports Center, and here is the kickoff. It's a liner, bounces on the five. Baron Weaver has it, he's up to the 10, 15, now the 20, finds a hole across the 25 yard line, and he's knocked out of bounds over there by a number of uh, the young men on the uh, kickoff team for Springtown, and that's where the uh, Kangaroos will start just outside of their own 25. Randy, that was a rough, long run for Barrett Weaver uh, to get out to the 25. He picked that ball up on about the two, I guess, or three, and, and uh, headed straight south, and uh, probably had to run 55 yards to make that 20-yard uh, uh, advance of the ball. And for the Hojo, they have got to keep Weatherford from breaking long plays. They've got to make them work for all of the yardage, and here is a uh, spin around by Zach Moore, he goes up the middle, he gets maybe a yard before the Pojo close in, and that'll, gain, that'll be a gain of about one yard. The ball is at the uh, 27 and a half yard line of Weatherford. Randy, uh, Coach McBroom talked earlier this morning on the coaches show about how big and physical the Springtown defense is, so it'll, this is gonna be a big test for the Rue offensive line. Second down and nine for the Kangaroos. They have one man back, that is Pierce. Their tailback, here is Zach Moore. He's going to pitch it out. Come wide. on, Garrett. Here is Garrett Hudson across the 30. And it looks like that uh, Garrett has a first down as he gets across the 35 and a nice pitch out by Zach Moore. Well, Randy, it sure looked like the Springtown defense is king on Mark Pierce because as soon as, uh, as, soon as that ball was handed over, or, or faked to him across the middle, the entire uh, Springtown defense hit it that way and Zach Moore got a good jump on the, on the uh, defensive end out here and was able to pitch that ball out to Garrett, uh, Garrett Hudson. Well, believe it or not, we have a holding penalty, I believe, against Weatherford, and this is uh, something that has been a bugaboo so far. Well, they would have had 500 yards rushing against Brewer, and they not had so many holding penalties last week. We're in the first period of play. There is no score between the Kangaroos and Springtown, 11.09 to go. Kangaroos will come out with two wide receivers. The offset will be to the right side. Here is the draw play to Mark Pierce. He's got a good hole. There he goes, He's there he goes. No, Mark, no, Mark, 30, 40, 50, and Mark Pierce is gonna take this one all the way for a Kangaroo touchdown. Oh, right. Way to start it off, Ruse. And I believe that was at the 19-yard line, and boy, that didn't take long. They call it, they call it the 17 after the 10-yard penalty, 83-yard run. That's his second longest so far this season, and for a touchdown. Last week we saw the 90-yard run for a touchdown, 83 yards this time. So Pierce is really tacking it on already. A great job of blocking over on the right-hand side of the line there by Jose and Killian and uh, Joe Hosh. Uh, Michael Ross is the center tonight. Bradley Simmons and left guard Jason Such at tackle. So uh, the Rue offensive line dominating there in the very first uh, part of the uh, quarter. Jeremy McClure will kick the extra point. He pulled by Cole Borland, that is good. And the Kangaroos have jumped on top very quickly. No, it is no good, it's just off to the uh, left side. So it's remained six to nothing. Kangaroos, we'll be right back with more weather for Kangaroo football in just a minute. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tablet. Tablet she Muffet. She would have sat on anything she was so wasted. Your future is a long and winding road. There are many options, many distractions, many twists and turns you can take on the way. Your future is out there. Need directions? Weatherford College can help you get exactly where you want to go. 
So contact us today. At Weatherford College, our grads go places. Al, super safe produce buyer, line one. Dave, yeah. 20 truckloads of grade A direct from my orchards today at 20% below market price. You know, Dave, you could advertise a lower price if you bought my grade B. Yeah, but there's not that much difference. But it's good enough for your competitors. 20 truckload. Super Saves Low Price gets you the good stuff. Okay, the good stuff. Kangaroos are on top, six to nothing, and an 83-yard run by Mark Pierce on the first possession of the Kangaroos, and they're starting right where they left off against Brewer, Mark. Boy, that was explosive, Randy. Uh, the Roos just uh, had one, one early mistake, and I would say that's overcoming a mistake, wouldn't you? I would say that's a good way to get this game started with uh, Jeremy McClure now ready to kick off. We have seen very good coverage by the Kangaroos all year long. Back deep for Springtown is Ben Overholt, and also Blue Harms is back there. And uh, Daniel uh, Cantwell. And the kick will go all the way back and bounce up in the air around the 15. It's picked up by Overholt across the 20, the oh. 25, and out to the 27-yard line. And a good tackle, I think. Crashing, Cashin might have been in on that one. Looked like one of his tackles. Yeah, Cashin Carlisle and Kane Riddle, and then Craig Boning came over the top and just mashed him into the ground. Just a good job by all the rules. Well, we mentioned uh, that uh, the starting quarterback for the Pojo was hurt in the first quarter last week, and he was such an, a very important part of the, the, of the uh, Pojo team, and you have to you have to wonder how they're going to be able to move the ball. They do have Brett Mathis in. He's a very good young quarterback, but this is his first experience. Here is a handoff, and this will go to Smith, the tailback. He'll get out across the 35 and all the way up to the 37-yard line. Well, we had number 21, Chuck Wilkie, in on the tackle there, Randy. And uh, the Springtown, they just lined up with that uh, full house backfield and just, uh, just everybody went straight to the right. And you know the play that that reminds me of is uh, the plays run in the last quarter by Mineral Wells from their wishbone and fear attack. And uh, that was a blast play to the right side and what they will try to do if they think that the kangaroos are handling that wishbone gear, they will uh, then move right in and start running isos. They'll run blast plays. Uh, they will move out into a flex bone ace, and they'll start hitting you with screen passes, drag patterns, draws, and reverses. And uh, that's how they keep you honest uh, and make you uh, work hard to control their wishbone. That's how they've had 400 yards uh, per game average over the last 13 years. But in that same uh, attack over and over, they, they hit you with a lot of traps too, and so you have to play the full field, the entire field from sideline to sideline when you face Springtown. Of course, the hosses have, are not there yet this year, but uh, they certainly can be dangerous. Randy, they uh, did a measurement just now on the field. It looks like Springtown is just a hair short, maybe six or eight inches short of a first down, so uh, the Roos need to stiffen up here if they want to hold them three, uh, three up and three down. They have good speed in their backfield also with Donald Smith, Ben Overholt has good speed. Of course, they did lose Zach Webb, who was uh, such a promising back and had shown uh, so, uh, so much promise in the first three or four games. He went down with a knee injury. And uh, so the, uh, the injuries, along with all of the, the problems that they already had, and here is a penalty, and that's another problem they've had, uh, along with turnovers this year. And uh, that's going to go against the Pojo as somebody jumped. Yeah, it looked like uh, maybe the right tackle jumped on the uh, line, got just uh, got his uh, body in motion just a half count before the, before the actual uh, ball is actually snapped. Kangaroos on defense have allowed only one touchdown over the last three, or is it four ball games? I know they gave up only one touchdown to uh, Castleberry, only one touchdown to Mineral Wells. Randy, uh, right quick, let me give you the lineup out there. We've got Michael Branch on the right side, uh, defensive tackle, Danny Merritt, inside tackle, uh, Scott Safford, and also uh, uh, Jason Such on the left side, defensive end. 
Brett Matthews oh, what a great job. Spring town. Here's a pitch out. Donald Smith has it, but he is not going to get much. And he's going to be trapped after perhaps a one-yard gain. Chuck Wilkie was over there, and so was uh, Jeremy McClure for the uh, Kangaroos. They have a six-to-nothing lead here in the first quarter. We're at 9:40 to go. Randy uh, Craig Boney did a great job of firing through the line there, and. Uh, uh, caught the quarterback, made him pitch the ball much earlier than he anticipated or, or what he would have liked to have pitched. And uh, that, that gave the real chance, uh, the real defense a chance to close on that player. Third down at about three and a half. Here is Brett Mathis. Nothing and good. he sticks it in the fullback's gut. That is uh, Patrick and just leaves it there. He tried to pull it out at the last moment, but uh, he couldn't uh, couldn't get it out. And he was up there close to the point needed for the first down, and he got it right at the 39. It didn't look like that Patrick had that much yardage. I think he got a pretty generous spot on that ball that time. And it will be first down for Springtown from their own 39. The Pojo losing last week to Northwest. And we'll give you some other uh, reasons that the Springtown team is not where they uh, thought they would be at the beginning of the season. And uh, oh, throughout this oh, first quarter, ball, getting, here getting. is a nice hit. Oh, the uh, Kangaroos totally stuffed the left side. This time, Mathis gives it to Patrick. They both get tangled up, and then in, come storming in is the right side of the uh, Kangaroo defense, and that's going to be a loss of about four yards. Randy, there were just nothing but white shirts surrounding the fullback and the quarterback, who the, and the quarterback was trying to pull that ball out. Uh, and uh, wouldn't have very much success. So we're going to see the nickel package come in here for Weatherford with a uh, second down at about 15 yards to go. Pojo will come out this time in the uh, flex bone ace formation. They'll have one man to the right side. Brett Mathis is the quarterback. This is his first try. And there's a pass that is complete. This is to uh, Jeremy Richardson, and he's got it out at around midfield. It was just a little uh, looking at pattern. Caught it at the 45, and uh, Richardson is able to get it all the way out to midfield. Well, that was a good, a good pass by the quarterback. Uh, real quick, they didn't uh, have to do a lot of pass blocking there. They just uh, gave him just enough time to get that ball in the air, and uh, the receiver made a good catch on that. 8.02 to go in the first quarter. The Porcupines are at midfield, and this time it is the uh, wishbone. They have one receiver to the right side, and Mathis will keep the ball and get about two yards as he gets to the 48 of the Kangaroos. Randy Jason Such, the defensive, left defensive tackle for the Roos that time, just did a great job of closing in on the fullback and uh, took away that option. The quarterback didn't have anything else that he could do other than just try, try to lunge forward for a couple of yards. Springtown does have some good size across the front. But as we mentioned, they thought that their best lineman was Quintana, and Quintana was hurt in the first game of the season, and he'll be out all year. They are missing him. And of course, their middle linebacker, Jake DeGear, who was all district for two years, he tore his ACL rodeoing and is just now beginning to come back. And Mathis will lead him to the line of scrimmage, and we're going to have a delay of game against Springtown right here. That'll move him back five yards. Well, Randy, sometimes when the coaches are sending in a passing play, it takes a little longer to call, and that may be why Springtown had that delay of game call. So they've had two five-yard penalties here in the first two series. 7-0-1 to go in the first quarter. The Kangaroos are leading, six to nothing. Well, we need to button them up right here. And it'll be the flex bone ace with two receivers out. Here is Mathis, he's gonna go back to pass. And now he throws one downfield. And it's gonna be board. intercepted at the 35. This is go, Barrett Bear. Weaver. Go, Barrett, go. He's back to the uh, 45 and then flat oh. right there at the 45 yard line. And that is the fourth interception of the year for Barrett. And he was sitting there waiting on that one, Mark. Now, Randy, what did I tell you in Mineral Well? You just don't throw that ball at Barrett Weaver. <laughs> I'm telling you, he just like Dion out there. And you just don't throw it over there. That was a great job by Barrett. You know, Barrett certainly has had the ability to make the big play. And you know, a lot of defensive backs, Mark, they can be there, but they can't make the interception. And uh, Barrett Weaver's one, if he's there, he's going to get his hands on it. He's gonna bring it back on you. 
First and 10 for the Kangaroos. Now from the 46, here's Zach Moore, right side. Look at speed. Look at He's look at midfield. He's at the 40. Boy, He's at the 30. He's at the 20. And Zach Moore is going to take it in one play. And that one goes for 55 yards. And the Kangaroos are striking from long distance here in the first quarter. Randy, uh, of course, that play was made possible by Zach's great speed, but also you know, uh, a key element of that play was Chad Lagali out there on the right side did a good job of blocking uh, the final uh, defender for Springtown and just let Zach cruise on into the end zone in there. Well, and, and look, for, look for the other wide receiver. Both lined up on the right side. Borland takes his man off to the sidelines, so you don't even see him get into the play. So the last man for uh, Moore to beat is uh, deep field. It looks like we're going to go for two here. They're going to try to make up the extra point that they missed. They have one man in the backfield. That is Mark Pierce. Here is the pitch out. Mark going to the right side, and he will get in. in there. And it's 14 to nothing in favor of the Kangaroos with 6.29 to go in the first quarter. Let's take a break right here. You're listening to Weatherford Kangaroo Football on KZ 1220, your sports center. Honey, can you pay these bills? It won't take you very long if you use Texas Banker Online. Sure. Girls, I'll be right back. Texas Banker Online, a simple and secure way to bank over the internet with no service charge. Now you can pay bills quickly and conveniently from the comfort of your own home with Texas Banker Online. That was quick. Yeah, that Texas Banker Online is really simple. Whose turn is it anyways? Texas Banker Online, a product from Texas Bank. Plug in now. Happy? What do you mean Grandma's never coming back? Why does he get to stay up? Where do babies come from? Did you smoke marijuana when you were my age? The older they get, the more complicated the questions. Here's how to answer. candidate for district judge for the 43rd Judicial District of Texas. I'm here today to ask you to do two things. First, I want you to support the weather for Kangaroo. Second, I want you to vote for me on the March 14, 2000 primary for district judge. Thanks a lot. Twice. An 83-yard run by Mark Pierce, and then a 55-yard run by Zach Moore. And uh, right now, Mark, it looks like that the Kangaroos can do just about anything on offense they want to do. And also, they're jumping on this team that doesn't have any confidence right now. And you mentioned this a moment ago. That is the way you want to start the game against a team that's psychologically down. Well, I think the Kangaroos got to be excited. Four plays for two touchdowns. Can't beat that deal. Here's Ben Overhold. He has the ball at the five on the kickoff. He's at the 10. Oh, and he won't get much as he tries to get inside Shane Weeks. And Shane Weeks and also Andy Cope say no. And down he goes around the 12 or 13 yard line of the Pojo. Well, Shane just decided he was going to be the first one down. And I mean, he got a hold of him and put him on the ground. Springtown's got uh, Delgado in there who weighs about 280. They also have Salas. He's about uh, 260. Heath is somewhere around 250 and 60 pounds. They do have a pretty good sized line, but uh, they don't appear right now, uh, Mark, to have the speed on defense that we've seen from these Springtown teams over the years. Well, and of course, uh, Weatherford's got exceptional speed this year, and those two items uh, really glare as you, as you watch the game. Here's a handoff inside. Oh. This will go to Michael Crawford, and Michael Crawford has had injury problems. He was out some last year. He's a 4-5 man. They are. They do have the speed in the backfield with the Donald Smith and also Michael Crawford. That was a good tackle in there by Jeremy Day, and then also Daryl Clay came in and finished that tackle off. Uh, Daryl's a hard hitter. He really put a lick on the back that time. It was a gain of about five yards, so second down at five. Springtown with the ball. They're at their own 17. 
Brett Mathis will hand it off. Here's a blast play. This is the overhold. Tries to get outside. Does gain a couple of yards out to the 21 before he is uh, knocked down. Has his heat, uh, feet uh, just taken out from under him there. Third down at about three for Springtown from their own 21. Well, Shane Weeks did a good job of playing his position there, Randy. Instead of batting for the inside play, uh, he held his position. The back bounced to the outside, and Shane was ready to make the tackle. Score is 14 to nothing right now. The Weatherford Kangaroos over Springtown. They've started fast this time. They started fast against Brewer last week. They had uh, two touchdowns in the first uh, quarter. Here's Brett Mathis. He'll go back to pass. He's looking over the middle. He has a receiver, and this will go to Jeremy Richardson. He's at the 30 and uh, is brought down just outside the 30-yard line, and Richardson gets his second reception for Spring Town, and they're out to around the 30-yard uh, line. We had a penalty on that, Randy. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, the Weatherford coaches look like they're uh, telling them that we want to take that penalty, so maybe a holding looks like a holding. Well, that broke, up, uh, broke open extremely well for Springtown. Uh, Richardson was right in the middle of the field, about uh, 10 yards uh, from the line of scrimmage. He was wide open, and this is certainly going to hurt Springtown. They don't need this right now. They don't need to get any further behind this early in the game. You know, Randy, earlier uh, today, we, we were pretty much under the impression that all Springtown would try to do is just rush the ball, but they've had uh, some pretty good success throwing the ball the first couple of times out uh, in this first quarter. Well, Brent Mathis is the uh, younger brother of uh, Mathis, who was a quarterback of the 94-95 team. As you know, that team went to the semifinals in state, and uh, he is a, has a lot of skills, and it's just a matter of experience for Brent. Here's a pass to the right oh, side, and it's in the hands of the receiver, and it will bounce right out. Well, that's a good break for Strickland. Yeah. Yeah. Striker Strickland was in the clear, and it was a good pass, but right uh, out of his hands at the last minute as he hit the sideline, and so now Springtown will have to punt. We're going to have Barrett Weaver and, uh, excuse me, Colt Borland and uh, Garrett Hudson back to receive the punt. A lot of the uh, Kangaroo fans came in early, and uh, they have put up flags all around the visitor side and up and down the fence. Blue and white flags, and they are fluttering in this breeze, and Kangaroos are looking good again. Here is a punt that will go back to the uh, 45 and it's going to oh. be kicked around out there and Garrett Hudson's going to fall on it and he finally falls on it at the 32. He tried to uh, catch it around the 40, slipped out of his hands, then he kicked it and he kicked it backwards and uh, finally uh, Garrett jumps on it at the 32 yard line. So that's where the Kangaroos will start with a 14 to nothing lead. Randy, that just kind of slipped out of uh, Garrett's hands at an awkward angle. And uh, as he was bending over to pick, pick the ball up, uh, he, he caught it with his foot before he caught it with his hand and, and ended up chasing that thing down almost to the sideline. And, you know, we thought that uh, perhaps the Kangaroos might in integrate some of their passing tack in in this game. He did not pass much last week, of course, with the rain. It was kind of difficult. And with uh, Zach Moore, and now Zach Moore takes the ball around the right side. Stays on his feet across oh, the 45 in midfield, and it finally is tackled around the 45-yard of Springtown. So a good run there for Zach Moore of about uh, 20 yards. Boy, you know, Zach looks quick, and you know this offensive line, Mark, uh, we interviewed uh, Dwayne Ross, and he said that uh, this offensive line is the hardest working offensive line that he's been around. Yeah, they've, they've done a great job not only uh, in school and, and during practice, but Randy, they worked very, very hard this summer in the Physical Development Center. And uh, these guys started this uh, about in the ninth grade in the, in the PDC, and it's really paying off. First and 10 for the Kangaroos. They're at the Springtown 47, and there's an inside handoff that will get maybe two yards to the 45. And the way things were thrashing around in there, you have to think that was Mark Pierce. Yeah, that was, that was Mark Pierce. <laughs> And he just does not go down easy on a one or two yard run, or if it's an 80 yard run. Well, Randy, you were talking earlier about the Marines going ahead and uh, working on their passing game some, and looked like that previous play that uh, Zach was uh, planning on passing that ball, but McBr uh, Coach McBroom's been real happy with Zach's, uh, Zach Moore's choices about when to run and when to pass this season. 3.33 to go in the first quarter, and here is Pierce with it, and he is fighting for yardage, and 
He'll be stopped after a gain of about two at the uh, Springtown 42 and a half. And there is Jake DeGear in on a tackle. Big Jake, as we mentioned, just now coming into form. They, you know, they lost also Robert Stokes. Robert Stokes was a two-way performer, 6'4", 240, that they were counting on. He moved to Ohio. And then they had another uh, another player that uh, went both ways that did not return to school. So they, this is essentially a totally different team than Springtown had on the field last year. Here is Zach Moore back, third down in about five and a half. He's looking to his right side, and he oh. throws one past Shanahan, who came around. Shanahan was a flanker on the right side, or he was the, uh, the fullback in that formation. He was right back uh, by Zach, and he went around, and Zach tried to hit him on a, uh, a, a little screen slide pass, and it went right past Shanahan, so fourth down in about six, and the Ruse will uh, go back to punt. Well, uh, Springtown had that pretty well smelled out, Randy. They had a blitz coming in from that right side. Zach didn't have it uh, much score, so didn't he? Then to get rid of the ball to the court. Garrett Hudson will be back to punt at his own 45. Here is a good snap, and the kick will go straight up in the air. I mean, way up in the air. Here it finally comes down, hits at the 20-yard line, and gets a, a kangaroo bounce down to the 14. And there, Kane Riddle downs it. 2.35 to go in the first quarter. The Kangaroos are leading Springtown by the score of 14 to nothing. Mark, any surprises so far? Well, I think uh, I am surprised at how uh, much quicker the Ruse look out there, both offensively and defensively, than Springtown does right now. Uh, our line is coming off the ball a lot faster than they are. And of course, our backs, uh, both defensively and offensively, are getting to uh, get to the line of scrimmage a whole lot faster than uh, I think the Springtown backs are right now. You know, and a lot of Springtown's problems started back in the spring when Azel came in and raided their coaching staff. They got to Gary Rushing, who had been here 13 years as the offensive coordinator. Oh, and good a very play. good one. And there's a nice play. And coming in on the left side was crashing Cash and Carlisle, and he stops him right at the line of scrimmage. Randy, that looked like a bowling ball going through there. Uh, <laughs> there's three three players coming right at this uh, left-hand side of the field or as we look at it, the left-hand side of the field. And old Cashin just, he went for the shoelaces on all three of them, and uh, he had a strike. Well, that was Michael Crawford carrying the ball for the Pojo. They'll have a second down and nine from their own 15-yard line. And, you know, they look tentative out there, Mark. They just look like they're kind of going through the motions right now. I'm sure that uh, with Brett Mathis in there for the first time, here's a nice run by Patrick. Keith Patrick, the fullback, will get out over the 20 to the 21 now, Heath Patrick is about 195, perhaps 200 pounds, fullback. And uh, he's done a good job so far this year for Springtown, been one of the bright spots. Well, we had Keith Such and Craig Boney uh, combining uh, for the tackle on that uh, right-hand side. There was another Rue player in there also. I couldn't, I didn't get the number on that, but uh, uh, the Rue's doing a good job of not tackling the run room with just one player. Uh, they're getting three and four guys on that on that ball carrier. Third down and four, 134 to go in the first quarter. Kangaroo coaches are lined up over there, right at the, uh, right near the uh, yard marker, making sure they've got a good view. And here comes Brett Mathis leading them out from the flex bone ace formation. Here's a pass. This will go to uh, Jeremy Richardson again, and this is the third reception for Richardson as he does a little hook pattern up around the uh, 27 or 8 yard line and that will be enough for a first down. I mentioned the uh, kangaroo uh, coaches a moment ago Mark. When you look over there you can see the lights on a lot of heads. That, there's not a lot of hair on top <laughs> and you know I don't know if that's just something that happens to you if you're coaching for the kangaroos but the, for, they seem to have a problem. Some uh, of the problem I know is by choice but I think some of them over there just can't do anything about it and they ought to take Beninardi and shave his because he, he looks out of place on that sideline. <laughs> looks like a hippie, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, there you go. Play, and in a backfield, being trapped is Smith. And I believe that was uh, Jeremy McClure. Yeah, Jeremy McClure uh, dodged one uh, blocker and uh, got his head across a bow there and took the runner down. Didn't let him gain any yardage at all. Actually lost a yard on that. Jeremy McClure has made one big play after another all year. For the uh, Rue defense. It looks like we we're uh, bringing our nickel package in here on second down. It will be second down and about 12 yards to go. Springtown is at their own 26 and a half. 
They will come out in the wishbone with one receiver to the right side. And here is a blast play to Donald there Smith. And a nice tackle coming in. This time is Kane Riddle in the tackling. Again, very good for the Kangaroos. Well, Randy, I was watching the Roos warm up some today, and uh, they spent, I don't know, two or three minutes, even in warm-ups, working on form tackling. And uh, they've just done an excellent job defensively of uh, form tackling this year. You know, and some of these holes look like originally they're opening, opening up pretty well, but the first person that comes along makes the tackle for the Kangaroos, and Pojo totally stymied. Right now it's 14 to nothing. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with more weather for Kangaroo football right after this. sat in the corner. Sure, smoke that much pot and you'd be paranoid too. In the early days of Parker County, the courthouse and square was the focus of activity. Education was important. The first high school was built in 1885 on the north end of the block, now occupied by the City Hall. The White Junior High was constructed on the site of the Old Central High and was used until the new South Main School was available. We are named Weatherford National Bank because we are Weatherford. From the rodeo to the peach festival to Christmas on the square and everything in between, you'll find us there sharing in the rich heritage of Weatherford and Parker County. Come by any of our five offices located throughout Weatherford and Alito. You'll find free checking with overdraft protection, full service mortgage department, extended lobby hours, and even Saturday banking for all the services that our customers have come to expect. Weatherford National Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Kangaroos lead it 14 to nothing over Springtown. We're in Springtown tonight, Porcupine Stadium. Two big plays by uh, the Kangaroos in the first quarter. An 83-yard run by Mark Pierce, and then a 55-yard run by Zach Moore. And the defense has also been tough. Here is Brett Mathis throwing a pass, and oh. it's almost intercepted by Kane Riddle, who was out there right in front of the Pojo player. That was a Michael Crawford coming in uh, in the flat there for Springtown, but incomplete, and the Pojo will have to punt again. Randy in that nickel defense at the Roos uh, run right there, it looked like the looked like Kane Riddle was just kind of playing center fielder out there watching the quarterback's eyes, and uh, he got a good jump, just didn't quite have enough uh, didn't quite have enough time to get to that ball. Well, Jacob Griffin will punt for Springtown. It'll be standing at his own 15. And Garrett Hudson is back, and so is Colt Borland for the Kangaroos. And here is the punt, and this one will be returned. Colt Borland, left side, gets away from one man. Now he is at the 50, 45, and finally run out of bounds inside the 45-yard line of Springtown. And the Kangaroos, very good field position again. Randy, you know special teams play uh, can oftentimes make the difference in a ball game. And I was just watching the blocking on that uh, on that return right there. And Jeremy Day did a great job of blocking one player, sliding off of him, and, and then hitting the second man. So uh, all those ruse out there, whether they're offense, defense, or special teams, are giving everything that they've got. And I still expect to see some passing. And I, I, you know, you, you would expect to see some of this series right here by uh, Weatherford, first and 10 from the Springtown 42. Zach Moore They're in the I formation. Here's a handoff to Pierce, and he breaks a tackle as he usually does, and he breaks another tackle. He goes out of bounds around Whoa. the 30 yard line. We got a couple of flags up, and the way the holding has been, you almost expect that uh, we'll have a holding call here against Weatherford. It looks like Matt had a late hit also. Uh, there's, there's three flags over there, and they all kind of came out at separate times. And you know, we've got to give, but well, I'm looking right at uh, Don Legali here. We've got to give Chad Legali a pancake block on that 80 yard run last week, week by uh, Mark Pierce. 
because he flattened the defensive man on that side. It was also a good block by Antillion on the uh, linebacker. And uh, then I think it was uh, Joe Hash on that side. He made a good block. He curled around and got the defensive end. And then Garrett Hudson came up, and he just helped the, the uh, strong safety who came up on the left side. Garrett Hudson just pushed him inside, and uh, they opened up a huge hole. And then Mark Pierce gave that little head fake. You know, he is a good faker. Some fakes are not fake, but his fake looks real. First and about 18 yards to go. Here's there a pass go. on the right side. Get out there, Portland. He'll get some yardage. Right. Good job, the 40. Chad. Now the 35, cutting inside, and then finally down out around the 32-yard uh, line of Springtown, and that's a gain of 17 yards. Randy, you know, last week uh, when Zach Moore had to uh, sit out some in the second half, uh, Cole Borland came in and did a great job at quarterback for the Ruse and showed quite a bit of speed, had, had several good long runs there. And as he caught that ball out in the flat, uh, he, showed a, he showed a lot of speed there. And Chad Lagali did a good job of getting him about another three or four yards. Northwest and Boswell are playing tonight. That will be a very important game. An 8-4-A will give you some scores after a while. Second down and one for the Kangaroos. They lead it 14 to nothing. We're in the second quarter, here is Mark Pierce. And he will dive across the 30 down to the 28-yard line of Springtown. That will be a first down. And Springtown having a lot of trouble stopping this kangaroo attack. Well, the right side, I mean, the left side of the offensive line uh, just doing a good job there, Randy. We've got Bradley Simmons over there and Jason Such, and also our tight end, Jermaine Leslie, uh, doing a good job of blowing the uh, Springtown Porcupines off the ball. First and 10. The offset will be to the right side. There are two receivers out for Weatherford. Here's Zach Moore. Look out. Big hole left side. Darts That's through at the 15 oh. and down to the 10-yard line. And here is another flag. And this time you believe it's going to be against Weatherford. And, boy, I'll tell you, the flags, when they come against the Kangaroos, Mark, it just seems like they come in bunches. Well, they have, but, uh, Randy, the majority of these flags, I've got to believe, are, are primarily based on effort. And uh, they're, not, they're not just dumb uh, fouls so much as, as the guys are, they're doing everything that they can. And sometimes when you get your your hands outside of your the frame of your body, they just almost automatically call that. And uh, I'm not so sure that the refs aren't looking for a little something to call right now. 10-19 to go in the second quarter. And this one will come back to outside the 30 yard line. Mark it at the 32, and the Kangaroos will have a first down and 15. But you know, even, even when the Roos do have a penalty like this, Randy, you still have the feeling like they're fixing to do something special. So uh, every play, you you just kind of feel like the Roos are just about to explode. So do you have the feeling, Mark, or not? Well, I've just had the feeling about the whole game. <laughs> first and 15 for Weatherford. Zach Moore's back. Here's the draw play to Pierce right up the Atta middle. Boy. Atta boy. 20. He's at the 10. There's one man to get him. He breaks that tackle. That. He's going in. Look at that. Oh, and he was like a runaway train that time. And Mark, when he got ahead of steam, I would not have wanted to be a Pojo player <laughs> with Mark Pierce running that hard. And he did run over the last man. It's 20 to nothing. And a 32-yarder by Pierce. And it's beginning to pile up for Weatherford early tonight. Well, and the, the line just doing a great job there, Randy. They, they're opening some wide holes. Uh, the the uh, receivers are blocking hard downfield. Uh, uh, Garrett Hudson doing a good job of blocking. Here's the extra point attempt. It is up, and Jeremy McClure will send that one through. It is 21 to nothing. Weatherford over Springtown. We'll be back with more kangaroo football in just a minute. Your hometown bank teams up with your hometown kangaroos to provide the support for a successful athletic year at Weatherford High School. Texas Bank, a proud sponsor of the Kangaroo Stadium scoreboard, the sports medicine John Deere Gator, and the new athletic training complex. Texas Bank makes the commitment to our student athletes to place them in the winner's circle. 
backing our kangaroos, banking at Texas Bank. Member FDIC, an equal opportunity lender. You can find yourself living in the middle of breathtaking beauty among the wildlife of Texas at Silverado on the Brazos. This upscale, low-density equine residential development has a world-class arena, 200 box stalls, and professional trainers on site. Spectacular building sites in the Brazos River. Boating, hiking, trail riding, and coming soon, an 18-hole championship golf course. To choose your beautiful home site, call 817-341-7770. It's always someone else's kid who smokes marijuana. Someone else's kid who's messing up at school. Someone else's kid who's having trouble at home. But what happens when someone else's kid meets your kid? Talk to your kids about marijuana before someone else does. Well, Jeremy McClure is about to kick off again. And this is the third time already in McClure. You know, his leg is probably getting a little tired. Hey, Randy, let me, no. let me jump in oh, here three. a second. I'm the third oh, guy three. in the booth here, one of the other voices for the Ruse this year. <laughs> but uh, the, the field position has been a big factor in this game. Sure, the Ruse are, are running terrific, but uh, unfortunately for Springtown, they're starting uh, down on their own 13-yard line, down on their own 14-yard line. And unless they can get some breaks on field position, uh, it, it's really going to be a long night for them because a long, sustained drive against this uh, against this rude defense is going to be very hard for Springtown to accomplish. Well, and the uh, Kangaroos are not letting them recover at all, and uh, they're staying on top of them, and that's what uh, the Kangaroos needed to do in this game. Here is the kickoff, oh, and it will go back that. to Overholt, and he'll have to down it in the end zone, and he does as it uh, got away from him. So the Porcupines will start at their own 20-yard line. Well, we got uh, Daryl Clay. Looks like he got banged up a little bit on that, but he's limping off. 9:44 to go in the second quarter, and the uh, Weatherford Kangaroos 21, Springtown nothing. And the uh, Pojo will start at their own 20-yard line. Michael Branch is at the right defensive end. Danny Merritt's in there, right defensive tackle, and there's Safford, left defensive tackle, and then uh, Jeremy Day on the left side as the defensive end for the Kangaroos. Here's the wishbone formation for Springtown. Hand off, this goes to uh, Overholt. He'll have about five yards as he makes it out across the 25. And Springtown, uh, you know, if they're gonna get back in it, they're just gonna have to hold on to the ball they're going to have to make sustained drives, and obviously they cannot let Weatherford get that ball up around midfield the way they've been doing it. They're just lining up in the backfield, and uh, not much uh, deception or uh, finesse about the way they're playing right now, Randy. They're just, they just run one side or the other with all the backs. Well, with Anthony Hare out of there, they're just running a basic, uh, a basic uh, ISO and a basic blast against uh, each side of the uh, kangaroo line. They try it on one side and they try it on another. They're just keeping things as simple as possible here for Brett Mathis. Well, boy, Jason, I mean, uh, Scott Safford did a good job there with, along with Key Such of just uh, clogging that play up. Didn't allow the Springtown Porcupines to get any yardage on that play. And we talked about uh, Springtown having winning seasons since 1980. They have not had a losing season if the Kangaroos win this one. This will be the first one in almost two decades of football for Springtown. And uh, like we said, the fans, even the players, are all in shock right now. Here is a handoff. Nope. Matt is going to keep it. He is going to be trapped by Weeks. And down he goes at the 19-yard line. And in comes also Michael Branch. The boy Weeks didn't go for Frank at all, did he? He was on the quarterback immediately. As uh, soon as he saw that, that, that ball wasn't being handed off, he did a good job of just kind of holding him up there for Michael Branch, who came in and finished that play off. And that was a naked bootleg by uh, Mathis, and had he got around Shane, he would have probably had good yardage. But Shane Wicks is a very heady little player. For Randy, there's no worse feeling than to have the ball and be being held up by a defensive player for another one to come in and take a shot at you. Jacob Griffin will punt it. 40-yard line, 
45, and it will go out of bounds on the Springtown side at the 47. And again, we're going to see the Kangaroos out there in very good field position. Don, that uh, uh, that field position plays right into the, your comment earlier about uh, how fortunate the Roos have been to start with a short field to play. And uh, here, Springtown, I think that 20 yard starting at the 20 yard line was their best field position so far. You know, we thought we might see uh, Jared uh, Tidwell back in in this game. He uh, broke his arm. He has a cast. They have to put a big foam uh, covering on that cast, and then it has to be approved by the officials before he can come into the game. And the way things are going, they probably just won't risk Tidwell. Here is Zach Moore cutting inside of one man. He'll get down to the 40-yard line as Jake DeGear tried to make the tackle. And that uh, Jake DeGear is an outstanding linebacker, but like we said, he... He did tear up his ACL uh, on the rodeo circuit and did not uh, start early and is just now beginning to come around uh, to form. Well, Randy, earlier in the year, the Roos had several fumbles uh, from carrying the ball a little too loosely there. Uh, that play, uh, Zach Moore did a good job of wrapping it up as the linebacker came up to hit him. Second down and three for the Kangaroos, I formation. Mark Pierce has it. Somebody has him by the ankles at the line of scrimmage, but he drives forward for a, a couple of yards. It'll be close to the point needed for the first down, and that was a Mark Leith in on the tackle for the Porcupines. We're at 6.42 to go. We're in the second quarter. Weatherford is on top, 21 to nothing. And now's a good time to do a good play action pass, Mark. That's my prediction. How about you? I'll go with whatever you call, Randy. Third down and just a yard. Kangaroos have been moving the ball. They have to feel good that they can get that yard if they need it. Let's see what they do. Offset will be to the left side. That's Garrett Hudson and uh, Mark Pierce in the backfield. Here is Zach Moore. He's going to sneak it, and he'll be close to the first down. I'm not sure if he got it. Good surge there by the uh, Springtown interior. Well, Randy, you got to feel as as, uh, as uh, good a job as the uh, Rue offense has done so far. Uh, even this close, if the Ruse haven't made it, you got to believe Coach McBroom would go ahead and go for it on fourth down. And I want to see that pass to Jermaine Leslie. Last week I called him Jermaine Giles. Is there a Jermaine Giles around? Somebody. I, I'm, I'm not Don, sure where you no, got that. Well, okay. Anyway, Jermaine Leslie, I still want to see them throw a quick pass to Jermaine Leslie. In slant in. I knew you made him up in basketball last year. So, uh, no, thanks, you, are thanks, you looking Mark. for uh, you looking for Cliff Giles to get back on this team after his go. senior year out last year? And that's a first down. And the ball is at the 37. As uh, Mark Reby and I got uh, an opportunity last year to uh, broadcast Kangaroo basketball, they were area champions, or they were area uh, by district champions. They went to the area championship game, and we also did some some. Uh, Lady Rue basketball. We did kangaroo softball. I've been looking for a state championship. I had to drop out early with the uh, the Rue, uh, Lady Rue softball team, and I still think they're the best team in the state. I agree. Zach Moore, a pitch out. Here There's we go. Here we go. Block. Right, boy, and here is Mark Pierce. He's at the 30, the 20. Cuts inside at the 10-yard line. He's down to the five before he's wrapped up. And Mark Pierce, he's just running at will out there right now, doing whatever he wants to do. And Colt, Colt Borland just buried that cornerback out there, Randy. He drove him out, just about drove him off the field. Mark Pierce, he already has two touchdowns. I think he came in, Dom, with 16. Is that correct? So he has 18, and that will be a first down now at the Springtown five-yard line, 5.39 to go in the second quarter. Kangaroos already up on top, 21 to nothing. They are looking sharp for the uh, sixth week in a row. Offset eye to the left side. They have a strong formation to the right uh -oh. side. Get on it, and There's Zach. a fumble, and Zach Moore will fall on it at the five. Well, we just had a little uh, miscue there between Zach and the center, uh, Michael Ross. And Zach did a good job of getting hold of that ball uh, and not uh, spoiling this scoring opportunity. So it will be, uh, well, they're going to have a uh, penalty called against Weatherford, so that will move the ball back. And if I was Springtown, I think I'd just go ahead and take that play. Well, they probably can't since it was an illegal procedure. So it will be first and goal. I don't believe they can get the, uh, no, they can't. They can't get the first down, so it will be first and goal for Weatherford at the Springtown 10. 
Randy, we just need a little more operating room there. We're a little too close to the goal line to start from. And Mark Pierce, I'm sure he's up around 134 or 40 yards rushing right now here in the first half. The offset is to the left. Here's Zach Moore. He will keep the ball himself, and this time he's going to be wrapped up as Donald Smith comes in, makes a good tackle. Well, then, right at the 10-yard uh, line. Springtown's seen Zach carry that ball around the, around the end several times already tonight. They did a good job of closing on him then. Second you know, down. Springtown, they lost that first game 13-12 to, to Frisco, and they had it won. And Frisco, a very powerful 3A team. They were quarter finalists. And they, uh, Springtown fumbled late in that game, and they just seem like they have not recovered from those two fumbles that cost them the Frisco game. Here is Zach Moore. He's back. He's looking for a receiver. Here's the pass we've been looking Atta for, boy. and it goes to Garrett Hudson in the corner of the end zone. That is a touchdown for the Kangaroos. A great job there by the Rude the, uh, offensive line of giving Zach plenty of time, and uh, Garrett went around that end like he was going to block and then just slipped by the, the linebacker and by the quarterback and was wide open out there in the, in the corner of the end zone for that pass. And that will make it 27 to nothing with 426 to go in the second quarter. Kangaroo fans have totally filled the uh, south side of the stadium and they have got to be enjoying themselves right now. Here is the extra point attempt by Jeremy McClure and it is good and it is now weather for 28. Springtown, nothing. We'll be right back in a minute. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep. Well, duh, that's what happens when you get stoned. Teamwork, that's what it's all about in football. The teams that win championships always work together. It's the same in banking. The folks at First National Bank of Weatherford work together as a team to provide the best service possible. We're the best bank in town because of teamwork. We treat all our customers as a VIP because to us, everyone is important. Come by today and see what teamwork can do for you at the First National Bank of Weatherford. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Here at Green's Florist, we strive to please our customers. Come by and see our large selection of silks, plants, cut flowers, balloons, and novelty items. Established in 1957, we're the oldest family-owned florist in Weatherford, having over 55 years of combined experience with a friendly and knowledgeable staff. We're located at 701 North Main. Give us a call at 594-2733 and we send flowers worldwide. And this time, 10 yard pass. Believe it or not, a pass, Mark Reby, from Zach Moore to Garrett Hudson. Well, Randy, uh, early on we talked about uh, the fact that this is the kind of game that the Ruse could come in and, and be a little overconfident in, seeing how Spring Town's been down some uh, earlier this year. And uh, obviously, Coach McBroom and, and his coaching staff uh, have not allowed that to happen. They, they've come out very focused. Uh, they know what they want to do, and uh, they know what their jobs are, and they're doing their jobs, and that's exactly what you want to see. They look very confident out on the field right now. Here is Jeremy McClure. This is a liner to go all the way back uh, beyond uh, Overholt and through the back of the end zone. So with 420, Again, Springtown will start from their own 20-yard line They're in the second quarter. Randy, as fast as the Rue defense gets down on kickoffs, that's probably the smartest play that the return man can make is to let that ball go ahead and be a touchback so that they do get the ball on the 20. I think otherwise the Ruse would stop them at the 15 or the 10 or something along those lines. So it's probably a pretty small play. Hey, Randy, uh, just, to, just to let you know, well, that first run by uh, by Pierce put him over 1,000 yards already for this season and 158 yards just so far tonight. Well, I was just about to mention that the Kangaroos have rushed for almost 900 yards in the last two games. And uh, the way things are going here, they're not going to hurt their average at all as they have uh, been opening up big holes 
And you know, the way they manhandled uh, Brewer's defense, here's a, about a one yard run for Springtown, about two yards perhaps, out to the uh, 28. The way they have been opening up holes in the defense with a rather a smallish offensive line is what uh, is amazing to me. Randy, uh, look how many uh, men that we have there up on the line uh, defensively. We've, we've got probably uh, seven and eight guys on the, in, in what they call the box in that football, in that football language. Right. Second down at about seven. Brett Mathis with the ball. He's gonna keep it oh. across the 25, and he's run down from behind around the 28, and this is uh, Merritt over to make the tackle. It will be third down at about two. Or Springtown from their own 28 and a half yard line. We're down to 319 to go in the second quarter. Well, that was a great job of pursuit by Danny Merritt. Uh, the quarterback managed to elude the first tackler of the ruse, and Danny did a good job of just staying after it from that left hand side. Uh, came all the way across and tackled the quarterback. And Springtown, I believe they expect that uh, Anthony Hare. A regular starting quarterback. I think that he will probably be back in a week or two. He has a bruised patella. Here's a handoff to Overholt, right, boy. and I believe he does have the first down around the 32. And over to make the tackle is Branch and also Weeks. Roland Mazare. Chuck Wilkie, as usual, is in the area. Randy, nearly every time one of the Springtown uh, ball carriers goes down, he's got two or three roos piled up on him. So. That by itself will wear you down. First and 10 for Springtown, and they have not had many first downs in this game in the first half. Kangaroos are playing very deep in the secondary, uh, and it appears that uh, Springtown is going to pass. They are just keeping everything under the umbrella tonight. Mathis is going to keep it on a, around the right side, and he finds a little hole, squirts through there for about five yards. As they run the midline option. Of course, you've got to stop the fullback in the midline option in the wishbone. If you can stop it and string it out, that's uh, the way most defenses try to do it. They make sure they stop the fullback, the man that is shooting upfield on you, and then pressure the quarterback to pitch it out. If you keep getting that quarterback to pitch it out every time, then eventually some good things are going to happen for you. Second down and four. Mathis will keep it this time. He's got some room to the 40. Now he pitches it back across the midfield. There's a good pitch by uh, Brent Mathis at the last second. As coming around from the tailback position was uh, number five, and that's Ben Wright. And I haven't seen uh, Ben out there before. Was it number 25? It was 25 Blue Harms. And Blue Harms takes that one all the way across midfield. And for the first time tonight, the uh, Pojo around the uh, kangaroo side at the 49. Well, we had uh, uh, Chuck Wilkie and Craig Boney combining for the stop there. Did a good job of tracking the, the back down. Here's the uh, flex bone ace formation, and we're going to have the uh, timeout called. So let's go ahead and take a quick timeout right here. We'll be back in 30 seconds with four kangaroo football. Honey, can you pay these bills? It won't take you very long if you use Texas Banker Online. Sure. Girls, I'll be right back. Texas Banker Online, a simple and secure way to bank over the internet with no service charge. Now you can pay bills quickly and conveniently from the comfort of your own home with Texas Banker Online. That was quick. Yeah, that Texas Banker Online is really simple. Whose turn is it anyways? Texas Banker Online, a product from Texas Bank. Plug in now. Those who dive lightly into the market today soon discover that when opportunity swims side by side with peril, it is easy to lose all sense of direction. The riskier the investment environment, the more you need the fixed income strategies of Comer Moyers Capital Advisors. Is your investment advisor recommending Comer Moyers for 1999? Comer Moyers, managing money, earning trust. Pete's Place, this is Egan. May I help you? On June the 1st, 1976, it was my opportunity to walk in the front door of the Pizza Place and weather protection. At that time, you could get the lunch special, which is a small cheese pizza, a salad, and a drink for only 95 cents. There's been a lot of things that have changed in weather protection in the last 23 years, but there's one thing that's always remained constant. 
The pizza place and the Weatherford kangaroos have always been the perfect combination. Kangaroos are leading Springtown by the score of 28 to nothing. And they have dominated from the opening gun tonight. Long runs by uh, Mark Pierce and another long run by Zach Moore. Then a 10 yard pass from Zach Moore to Garrett Hudson. And right now the Kangaroos are at uh, three and zero in district play. Now Boswell and Azel are both two and one. And uh, Brewer is hosting Mineral Wells tonight. And Azel and Northwestern, or rather Boswell and Northwestern playing. Here's Mathis, he's got a good hole. And he'll get to the 45, perhaps the 44 yard line of the Kangaroos. It'll be second down and about four as he moves to the right side. Randy, don't you believe that uh, Coach McBroom went ahead and called that timeout just to emphasize to the root players how important it is not to let Springtown score right before half. And you know, they uh, held Brewer in that first half. Brewer got down twice and were stripped of the ball inside their own 10. Here's Patrick, the big fullback, and he'll get down around the 40 yard line. And with 1.15 to go, we'll have a uh, a stoppage of play by the uh, Pojo. Let's give you some scores right now. 28 to nothing, Alito over Carter Riverside. And we don't have a score yet on uh, Boswell and Northwest. And Azel is taking on uh, Castleberry. And I think that is uh, in, uh, in River Oaks. And then uh, Mineral Wells and Brewer tonight. And you know, I think that Mineral Wells and Brewer game could be a very good game. Yeah, you would think that Brewer would be, uh, they'd have their stingers out tonight after uh, Weatherford, uh, just, we just whiffed them every way we could last week. So uh, you would think Mineral Wells is going to have their hands full with Brewer coming over there. See, now I tried real hard to get away from that volleyball game just as quick as I could and get over here for some of the pregame because I wanted to call for the upset. I wanted to call the upset of Mineral Wells over Brewer. Uh -huh. so, now, so now don't... Uh, you know, if it doesn't happen, well, it doesn't happen. But uh, I think there's a possibility an upset there. Well, we'll see if Don Magali is a predictor also here. Of course, we'll have to read the paper in the morning to do that. Well, I think that is certainly possible. Mineral Wells, they're just a team that if they if they play well again against you and you don't make the tackle, they're certainly going to uh, break some long plays. Boy, they do have the size and the speed, don't they? And who's bigger? I mean, Brewer's got a gigantic team. They had some of the biggest guys out there across the line on both sides that we've seen all year. And so that'll be a good matchup tonight. And of course, uh, Boswell and Azel are the two that right now the Kangaroos are looking at along with Brewer. Here's a quarterback sneak by Brett Mathis, and that will be a first down as he gets inside the 40 and down to around the 37 of Weatherford. We're down to 110. They're going to stop the clock and uh, place it at the uh, 37 and a half of the there's, Kangaroos. There's no doubt that uh, Springtown's picking up a little momentum right here, Randy, and the Roos uh, need, to, need to stop them before they get to the half. They'll go back in the wishbone. Here is uh, Brett Mathis. And uh, he's got the snap. He's going to throw a long pass out there in the flat. And it's uh, going to be over the uh, wide receiver around the 15-yard line. I thought he was going to throw it short, but then he just heaved a long one down the sideline. But that one will be long, and we'll have a second down play or we'll on the Pojo at the 37 and a half of Weatherford. Sure had good pressure in there that time on the play by uh, Danny Merritt. Danny doing a good job of whipping his uh, whipping his. Uh, a man and uh, just almost got to the quarterback. And that was Philip Means down for Springtown. But the pass was long and now we'll have a second down and they have one man in the backfield. They'll have two receivers to the left side. They'll have a slot man also to the left side. Here is the pitch out. This will go to Overholt. He has a little room and he will uh, scamper across the 35 and will be run out of bounds at the 32. And we'll have a third down play in about three yards. Clock is stopped as he went out of bounds with 54 seconds remaining. At the half, I'm going to tell you about the 1947 Weatherford Kangaroos. I think you'll enjoy hearing about them, and we'll have some other interesting uh, tidbits from Weatherford Kangaroo football over the years. As we said, if they win this one, this will be the first time since 1981 that they have had a six-game winning streak. Now, that team won seven in a row. They were tied in a by-district game. So they stopped at seven. Six of the uh, 
Six of the uh, wins were in the regular season, and then they had a, a playoff game as the uh, district that they were in was divided into two divisions, and they had a playoff game, or they had a, a championship game for the district between Gainesville and Weatherford, and then they had a bi-district game after that. And so this Weatherford team has a chance to do something that uh, hasn't been done in a long, long time. Here's Mathis, he'll cut inside. Get some good. Oh, coverage. there you go. And I believe there's that a fumble Scott around Sanford. the 25. And are they going to call that a fumble? They are. Yeah. It's going to go over to the Kangaroos at their own 22-yard line with 47 seconds left. And Randy looked like uh, Garrett Hudson was in on the recovery of the fumble, but number 50 Scott Safford uh, caught the quarterback just as he was uh, trying to make a cut, and Scott just wrapped him up from the back. And, uh, and force that ball out of there. And, and here's one more time where the Rue, uh, Rue defense, they bend and bend and bend, but they don't give up the score. And that is exactly what uh, Coach Reed was talking about uh, in his show. The Pojo Huddle this morning kept talking about how that the Kangaroos would give up a little yardage, but that they, uh, they would always seem to be able to find some way to stop you. And they've done it against Springtown here in this last drive. We're going to have the kneel down here by Weatherford with 40 seconds to go. It seems like they're kneeling down a little early here, Mark. Well, I imagine Coach McBroom's ready to get uh, back into the uh, back into the locker room and uh, talk with his players a little bit. They'll mark off five yards against Weatherford. The ball is at the 17. Kangaroos are up on top, 28 to nothing here in the second quarter. Mark Pierce adding to his totals. He's already the leading rusher in the area in Class 4A. Here is the uh, second kneel down, and this will run it down to about five seconds, I believe. This is this is one of those situations, Randy, where you don't want to risk a fumble. You don't want to risk a, uh, an interception right down here where, where the uh, ruse are on the near end of the field. Uh, you know, an error like that could really turn the game around for Springtown, so McBroom's electing to go ahead and take the knee and and uh, get on into the half with a 28 to nothing lead. And there is the third kneel down by Zach Moore and that will run it out here in the first half and it's been all Weatherford Kangaroos. The score, Weatherford 28, Springtown nothing. We'll be right back in a minute. I just don't want to. I think a lot of kids smoke pot. I feel like I'm the only one who doesn't. Why do I have to be so different? Different. Different. Maybe we're not as different as we think. First National Bank of Weatherford is excited about the 1999 Weatherford High School season. Since 1880, the First National Bank of Weatherford has provided friendly and reliable service to the folks in Weatherford and surrounding area. We wish all of the players, cheerleaders, band members, and fans success in all they do in 1999. Come by and visit with your personal banker at First National Bank of Weatherford, member FDIC and equal housing lender. In the early 1900s through the 1950s, Weatherford was known as the watermelon capital of the world. Farmers brought wagon loads of large melons to sell to visitors passing through the square. The watermelon that most people remember being in Weatherford was this one on the south side of the square, constructed for a parade around the courthouse. Weatherford was the watermelon capital of the world. They, they got everything together again. They went over to Boswell. They had uh, lost to Boswell the last three years, although they had beaten everyone else. They had not been able to beat Boswell the last three years. They played the best game they had ever played against the, the Pioneers, and it went into three overtimes, and then they lost it right at the end, and that seemed like it just ripped the heart right out of the uh, Pojo team, and they just have not been able to get back on top again. Here is the kickoff, and uh, it is picked up by Overholtz at the 15. He's out to the 20, the 25, and a nice run back by Overholtz as he gets out near the 30-yard line, and the Pojo 
will start and they'll be traveling east to west here at Porcupine Stadium. And Randy, that's probably their best uh, starting field position right there. They did a good job of running that back and uh, had four or five ruse in on the tackle that time for the kickoff. Jason Such will be at the left defensive end there, Sanford and also Merritt. On the right side, Michael Branch is in. Linebackers are Jerry McClure, or rather uh, McClure, and I believe that is Such in there. Weeks is also in for the uh, Weatherford Ruse. Here's the Atta first boy. play and a nice tackle by Jeremy McClure at the 30 yard line on Brett Mathis as he tries to uh, keep it around the right side. We also have Garrett Hudson in, Colt Borland and Barrett Weaver. Randy, uh, early, I mean late in the uh, second quarter, uh, Springtown had quite a bit of success running the ball, especially with the quarterback uh, faking that handoff and keeping it. And looks like the Ruse made a quick adjustment uh, at halftime, Jeremy McClure wrapping him up uh, for no, no gain. Second down and nine for the Pojo from their own 30 yard line. Just underway here in the third quarter and Springtown is down 28 to nothing. Here is Crawford with the ball. Pitch out to the left side. He'll pick up about five yards. He crosses the 35. And Crawford, you can tell he has plenty of speed, but oh, uh, well, that Weatherford defense is awfully fast. Well, uh, they have not been able to get outside well, on we the have, kangaroos. We have uh, Keith, Wil I mean Chuck Wilkie and um, Garrett Hudson doing a good job there. Took took a real good angle on the uh, runner there. And uh, Randy, both those guys have excellent speed. They closed on him very, very fast. Third down and about four yards for Springtown. They'll be in the wishbone. Mathis will go back. And oh, out of boy. Here's a long pass. It'll be caught at the 45-yard line. And slipping down is Jeremy Richardson. I thought that Mathis was going to be stormed under, but at the last second, he got the pass off. And Richardson, who is one pojo, having a good game tonight, catches a long one down to the 42-yard line of Weatherford. Randy, the uh, defensive line of the Ruse did make a good rush there. And uh, the right side of the Rue line just almost closed in for a sack. Uh, but he did get the ball off, and, and uh, good things happened to the uh, Porcupines on that play. So that will uh, get them uh, all the way down into the Weatherford end of the field now. Here is a ace formation. Mathis with the ball. He'll keep it himself. Has a good block. It's across the 40-yard line. And, oh, he takes a hard hit, I believe, from Shanahan. Holds onto the ball. Gets about five yards down to the 38 of Weatherford. Chuck Wilkie came in there and helped fill that hole, and, it, and I mean Chuck lowered the shoulder and put a whop on him. Second down, and let's say uh, six yards to go. Ojo just getting the ball here in the third quarter. They had the ball at the end of the uh, half. Just before the half, they moved down deep into kangaroo territory and fumbled. Here's the ace formation again. Mathis keeps the ball, has a good block to the outside. Moves down near the 31. That'll be a first down for Springtown. And some good blocking across the front right now by Springtown as they're moving the ball here at the uh, 31 of the Ruse. Well, we had uh, Garrett Hudson closing in for that tackle and drove him out of bounds, but he did get enough uh, yardage for the first down. And Randy, uh, the Ruse defense is uh, bending some here at the beginning of the third quarter. It's time for him to go ahead and and stiffen up and stop Springtown. First and 10 for Springtown at the 31 of Weatherford. They'll come out of the wishbone. They'll have one man to the right side. Here's a oh, handoff good job. and he is gonna be stuffed in the backfield. That will be a loss of a couple of yards. And they're coming in quickly is Branch and also Jeremy Day. Carlisle was back there for the ruse. Yeah, uh, Jeremy Day did a great job of getting in low and uh, getting a hold of the runner's feet. And then uh, Cash and Carlisle just really came in there and delivered a hard hit. And I was just about to mention, are the Kangaroos going to stiffen up right here? Because that's been their nature the entire season. You get down around their 30-yard line and things get tough on you. And the first play in this series, a two-yard uh, two loss. Here is Crawford to the outside. Oh. He slips away from one man, but there comes a good tackle by uh, Chuck Wilkie diving in. Gain of about uh, five yards just inside the 30. And Andrew Shanahan did a good job of hitting him low also there. Wilkie and Shanahan combining on that tackle. 
will have a third down and seven for Springtown. 8.07 to go in the third quarter. And they have taken the uh, kickoff here and drove from their own 29 to the 28 of Weatherford. Well, this is a play where we need to stop them right here, Randy. There'll be one man in the backfield. That will be uh, Heath Patrick. They'll have two receivers to the left side. Mathis back as a receiver, and it's going to be knocked away at the last minute by Colt Borland. Oh, good job by Colt. He had that... Uh, uh, pass defended very well. Cole Borland came in in the second half and guided the Kangaroos after Zach Moore went out with the uh, either a migraine. You know, they don't know for sure if it was a migraine that Zach Moore had last week or a, a, a mild concussion. And uh, Borland coming in, he handled the ball well. He showed uh, good leadership, and that certainly makes you feel a lot better, Mark, when you know you've got a guy that can come in and do that. Oh, there is a snap, and Mathis was not ready for it. it. Nope. The ball came back. Mathis was still motioning for his backfield people to get in position, and all of a sudden the snap came back, and uh, that was a fourth down play. So that has uh, that right there is very typical of uh, the way things have gone for Springtown. And the ball will go over to the uh, Kangaroos at the Springtown 33. We're at the Weatherford 33. Randy, I'm not sure that Springtown wasn't uh, trying to change the play a little bit. And uh, the center, I guess, just couldn't hear. And he went ahead and snapped that ball, and the Ruse have it now. So the Ruse come out with Mark Pierce now to pitch out. And he's going to the left side. He will be uh, stacked up right about the line of scrimmage. And a good job there by Jeremy Richardson and also Michael uh, Crawford. Randy Jermaine Leslie doing a good job of kind of manhandling his uh, at, uh, right defensive end for Spring Springtown. Jermaine's a big uh, young man. He's a sophomore, the only sophomore playing for the Ruse right now on the varsity level, and uh, just did a good job that time. And there definitely is a quickness difference in these two teams. You can just watch them at the line of scrimmage, and Weatherford just looks much quicker on getting off the ball. Zach Moore back, here's a pass to uh, Garrett Hudson. He breaks a tackle at the 40, 45, and then finally wrapped up by Jake DeGuerre around the 48-yard line. And there's another pass play for the Ruse. Don Legali says the Ruse threw three passes in the first half. They did complete one. They completed a uh, touchdown pass. Zach Moore to Garrett Hudson for 10 yards in the second quarter. And Randy, that's the type of pass play that really fits the Ruse well. It lets them use their speed. Uh, it doesn't take a long time to develop, and it gets it gets the uh, ball carrier just outside the defensive, uh, their grasp out there. First and 10 for Weatherford from their own 48. Moore's back to pass again, and he's go. going a long one down oh. the sideline around the 20-yard line. It will go over the head of Chad Legali. Now just about one more step, and Chad had, had a good chance of catching that ball. Well, that we know that uh, Chad can catch the tough pass. We saw him catch a tough pass against Stephenville in the first game. He came back out the next week and caught a pass and really got the Kangaroos going against Fossil Ridge. And uh, he's about due to get another one. Randy, that's uh, some some uh, teams are looking at that as a wasted play, but uh, as far as the Roos are concerned, that'll spread that defense out a little bit. Shotgun this time with Zach Moore back. Looks to the left side. There's a screen pass, or actually a little slide pattern to uh, Shanahan, and it just goes right off of uh, Drew's fingertips. Shanahan, an all-around player, good blocker. Well, you know, Andrew had a he had a great game. Uh, I'm not, I don't remember the exact game it was that uh, Garrett Hudson was out with a flu bug. I think that was the Burleson game, wasn't it? I believe that's right. He had a great. Uh, Punt oh, return, yeah. and then he had a long pass reception. Yeah, he just played a real good game that time. He's one of those guys you love to have on your team. Mark Pierce is going to come way out to the left side, a third down play. Zach Moore again from the shotgun. They decided you know, they're going to throw some. Here's a man in the clear, and this is Legali oh, just, over, just his, over his head. He had his arms outstretched, could not get it. He was wide open. Well, that was good play calling by the uh, uh, coaching staff of the Ruse. It looks like we do have a penalty on the play. Well, and this will probably be a hold because the Kangaroos are going back. So even had Chad managed to get that one, it would have been called back. 
but he was wide open. I don't think I've seen a receiver that wide open in quite a while, and he came all the way from the right side. Yeah, that, uh, that, that was confusing uh, for the Springtown defense, and uh, Chad was just, he was at a real awkward angle to try to catch that thing. Well, so. you know, the Roos are going to give up the ball right here, but I think that is something, that series right there is something they needed to do. I think they needed to get out and work on some pass patterns, get the feel of it, because eventually, somewhere along the line, they're going to have to depend on uh, the passing game to help them out. Well, and I believe this is uh, either the first or second punt that uh, Garrett's had to make tonight. Here's second. a uh, punt by Garrett, very high. It hits at the 20-yard line of the Pojo and bounces sideways, and it will be down by Michael Branch. So at the 21 is where Springtown will start. And you're right, that's the first time they have stopped uh, the ruse, I believe, since the first quarter. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that we had it. Or Perhaps they haven't punted today, is that right? No, I think we had one in had the one punt? Half. We get one a half is all we get, Randy. <laughs> and we've already wasted one this time. So we've got a score from here well, on from in. From here on out, it's going to be tough sledding. They will give no quarter as they cannot punt again. According to Mark Reby, All we right. have 6.08 to go in the third. Springtown has it. They trail 28 to nothing to the Ruse. Mathis, big hole, quickly closes though. He spins around and gets away from one Rue and will move up to around the 28 yard line. And they have opened up a couple of good holes on the right side lately. Well, we had Jeremy McClure, I mean, Jeremy Day in on the tackle there and also uh, Craig Bonin coming over to finish it off. Whenever you see the uh, Ruse get in a two and four technique, normally that means they're going to be looping around, but we just don't see a whole lot of movement by the uh, Kangaroo defense. We don't see many stunts. We don't see that many blitzes. Jeremy McClure will come in occasionally and such. Here is the next play. Mathis has a big hole across the 40 and just tripped up at the 45, or he would have been on a long run. There's a first down. Good open field tackle by Chuck Wilkie. And the Rue defense just a little confused or, or uh, tricked on that play. Uh, looked like they were really stopping or concentrating on stopping the fullback. And the quarterback did a good job of pulling that ball back and uh, went around the left side of the end and for a long run. And they are certainly using the backs inside as a decoy. And Mathis is doing a good job of faking here. First and 10 from the 45 on their own end. And here's Mathis again with the ball across the 45 up to midfield. That's a gain of five yards, and they are effectively operating their wishbone right now. Uh, actually, this is more of a veer as they're moving a little further to the outside on that first fake, if they use it at all. Well, you know, Randy, it's almost like we'll, uh, we'll just let them uh, do kind of whatever they want to until they get down to about our 30, and then we'll stiffen up again. Well, so. I think it's, it's time to go ahead and stiffen up right now, Mark. Uh, Pojo have looked pretty good on this series. Uh, 431 left, second down and four from the midfield stripe. Here is Patrick, and he is pounding his way across the 45. Here is a fumble, and Looks kangaroos like have got it. it. You bet. And coming up with it, I believe, is Boney this time. Well, Patrick, a good run, and he was running hard. But right at the end of the run, Ball pops out, and the Kangaroos have done it, and I, I told you that they needed to do it right now, Mark, and, and they I did it. I didn't see uh, who, the, you were exactly right, they didn't do it, didn't they? But I didn't see who uh, uh, pounced on that fumble, Randy, but uh, McBroom had described uh, that runner as a, as a bruising type runner, and looked like he got to just thrashing, a little, thrashing around a little too hard, and uh, actually wasn't taking good care of the ball. So the Roos have it now with 421 to go in the third. And here is Pierce, there running he goes. hard up the middle. He'll have about six yards, and he gets just across the midfield stripe. And that was a power move right there. That was not the draw play. No, and you've, you've got up front Bradley Simmons and Michael Ross and Jose Antillian. They're just doing a good job of, of blowing Springtown back three and four or five yards at a time. And uh, of course, then when Pierce actually gets hit, He'll drag, he'll drag the tackler a couple of more yards. And Coach Ross, the uh, offensive line coach, told me that Bradley Simmons is extremely strong. 
and uh, has been getting a lot better every week. Here's a run around the right side by Garrett Hudson on a pitch out, and he'll get about two yards on this play. Down to the 47 of Springtown. It's 28 to nothing. Kangaroos are leading. The yeah. Pojo have come out. They had a good drive, stopped the Kangaroos, and then had another good drive going and uh, fumbled. Well, Randy, uh, last week against Brewer, we saw the Roos run quite a few counter plays with uh, Garrett Hudson. We haven't seen that so far tonight. Pretty much uh, whichever direction they have started, they've, they've gone ahead and finished, with the one exception of the cutback that Mark Pierce made. He, he made a good fake one time and headed back to the right and scored on that long run. Third and one. Strong side is to the left. Here is there Zach Moore. He'll run to the right, though, and just squeezes through for a first down at the uh, Springtown 44. Well, on that play, Randy, we had number 63, Antillian, and number 64, Bradley Simmons, combining to just roll two of the Springtown players on the ground. They just uh, they just put them on their backside and held them down there till, till the whistle, I guess. Jason Such is the left tackle, and he is out on the field quite a bit for the Kangaroos. Plays defensive end. About 6'4", 210. Very strong for a guy that's 210 pounds and has a tremendous footwork. Here's Zach, pitch Here out go. to Pierce. Going to cut inside of one Here man, 40-35, and finally bowled over at the 33. And that will be a first down for the Kangaroos as Mark Pierce reels off about 13 yards. Well, Randy, as, uh, as that play finished out, you could see two or three roos getting up on their on their knees to watch Mark Pierce run. They, they were they were standing. I mean, they were getting on their knees just beside players that they had knocked down for Springtown. I was especially watching Kane Riddle that time. He just went in there, uh, cut his guy down, and uh, and did his job and got to watch the play from from ground level, as they say. And we've got a real stiff breeze blowing in from the south right now, and it's blowing across the field. And we've got a, a penalty flag down, and this will probably be a procedure call against Weatherford. You know what, uh, Mark, a lot of people get irked when we have uh, a lot of uh, procedure calls and everything, but I, I really believe it's a good thing. I think you need your officials to force you to play the game as precisely as you possibly can and to force you to play the game correctly because if you get away with some of these things uh, during the season and you go and you have another officiating crew somewhere, that doesn't let you get away with it, it can cost you when you get into the playoffs and you want to uh, be forced by that officiating crew uh, to play the game as sharply as you possibly can. Randy, I'd agree with you on that. Second, or first down and 15, Moore will go back to pass. Here is the slide pass. Nice catch by Hudson. And a good tackle over there, though, by Smith, who was right there and gets Garrett right at the line of scrimmage. That's Donald Smith. Well, uh, the Roos have uh, thrown that swing pass out there to their uh, backs, both uh, Garrett Hudson and Andrew Shanahan uh, various times this year and have had a lot of success and looked like Springtown pretty well uh, had that scouted out. So we have a second down and 15. The ball is at the 37 of uh, Springtown. 107 to go in the third quarter and a 28 to nothing lead. And Zach Moore Boy, you just have to say that he's just throwing the ball over the all over the place right now. <laughs> Mark, we haven't seen this many passes in a long time. And here's a fake inside. Moore is going to try to go outside with it. Uses his speed, but oh. then slips just as he gets around the corner. And that was Cantwell over there to uh, force him to the outside. But a gain of perhaps five yards. He'll move the ball down to the 33. And we'll have a uh, third down play. And now we've got a timeout. Let's take a timeout, too. It's 28 to nothing. Weatherford over Springtown. We'll be right back. Honey, can you pay these bills? It won't take you very long if you use Texas Banker Online. Sure. Girls, I'll be right back. Texas Banker Online, a simple and secure way to bank over the internet with no service charge. Now you can pay bills quickly and conveniently from the comfort of your own home with Texas Banker Online. That was quick. 
Yeah, that Texas Banker Online is really simple. Whose turn is it anyways? Texas Banker Online, a product from Texas Bank. Plug in now. Dennis Connolly and Associates at Weatherford Physical Therapy have been serving and supporting Parker County since 1982. Their new location is at 1404 South Main, next to the Golden Moon, Weatherford's only privately owned rehabilitation clinic specializing in physical, occupational, and speech therapy. The latest equipment demonstrates their commitment to quality personal care. For all your sports medicine, spine, and orthopedic rehab needs, call 341-3600. Weatherford Physical Therapy Services. Hi, I'm Shannon Carney, and this is my sister Stacy. Of Vic, Cressman, and Carney. Hi, this is Laura Cressman from Vic, Cressman, and Carney. Hi, I'm Vanessa Vic of Vic, Cressman, and Carney. Together, we are Vic, Cressman, and Carney, and we support the kangaroos. Oh, yeah, there is that other Vic, Cressman, and Carney, and they support the zoos too. Springtown is one of the smaller 4A schools. They could possibly drop back down to uh, Class 3A. You know, last year when Alito won the state championship, they had more students in school than Springtown who was playing at Class 4A level. And I'll guarantee you the Pojo last year had a better team than Alito. Of course, Alito fans won't like that. Here's Pierce breaking tackle Mark. across the 30, 20, down to the 15, and finally run down by Mings around uh -oh. the 12-yard line. Good run by Pierce. And he looks a little hobbled as he gets up. Yeah, it looks like he hurt his leg a little bit on that run. And Antillian is quickly over there to make sure he's all right. Well, if, if you spend as much time uh, blocking for Mark Pierce as, as Jose Antillian's doing, you're going to go over and check and make sure he's okay. Well, you know, Antillian is uh, Mark Pierce's bread and butter, and I guess... Uh, it's also vice versa there. Those two guys helping each other a lot this year. That's why we call it a team. Offset is to the left with Kane Riddle over there. Pass by Moore. He's going into the corner of the end zone, and it will be broken oh. up. As that one, I believe, was probably going to be out of bounds had it been caught. Well, that was a great defensive play by Cashin Carlisle. Cashin did a good job of making sure that ball wasn't intercepted. And he was able to uh, get his hand somehow around the uh, defender and knock it away at the last second. Well, let's take one more timeout. We'll be right back in just a minute. It's 28 to nothing, Weatherford over Springtown. I'm Troy Noel. I was married to Brad Noel, the singer of Sublime. Brad died of a heroin overdose. Jake's been robbed of having a wonderful person to be his father. Educate yourself. Heroin kills, period. We miss him and we'll miss him forever. And don't let anyone miss you. Weatherford National Bank, growing with Weatherford. We started in College Park and continued to expand into five offices located throughout Weatherford and Alito. No matter where you live, chances are that you are close to one of our offices. Take advantage of our customer-friendly services, free checking with overdraft protection, full-service mortgage department, extended lobby hours, and even Saturday banking. Weatherford National Bank, we kept growing until we became a part of Weatherford's history. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Trinity Paint and Body, owned by Bo Winstead, is located at 1600 Fort Worth Highway. They are known for their fast and superior service. Since opening in April of 1998, they are already having to expand their existing location due to the high volume of business. For great hometown service and a friendly staff, call Trinity Paint and Body, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And remember, for high quality service, Bo knows. And you know, Zach Moore has come in today and thrown a number of passes, and we've seen great protection out there for Moore, which is a good sign. 
for the Weatherford Roos. Nobody has gotten close to Zach Moore on any of these passes. And here's a handoff to Pierce, who breaks a tackle like he usually does right at the line of scrimmage, and then goes across the five, and he's down to around the two, and he may have a first down for Weatherford at the two-yard line of Springtown. And that will be a first and goal now for the Roos, and they're trying to add to this 28 to nothing lead. Randy, looks like they're putting their jumbo package in. The wide receivers are leaving, and we've got a pair of tight ends coming in, uh, both Jermaine Leslie and uh, I would, I can't see the other player's number from right here. 11.37 to go in the fourth quarter. Kangaroos come to the line of scrimmage. Double tight end situation. Here is the handoff. Here's Pierce. There and he he's is. driving in. And another touchdown from Mark Pierce. And it's up to 34 to nothing here in the fourth quarter with the Kangaroos on top. Well, you know, Randy, they just went off that uh, right side there. Jose Antillian and Joe Hosh doing a good job of just blowing uh, Springtown back into the end zone. And uh, Mark Pierce, of course, running hard as he always does. A uh, good score for the Roos to start the fourth quarter. Well, Jeremy McClure will come in. Colt Borland will hold. And Mark Pierce keeps piling up the touchdowns. And here is the attempt. It is up and it is through and it is 35 to nothing. Ruse on top of Springtown. We'll be right back in a minute. Your hometown bank teams up with your hometown kangaroos to provide the support for a successful athletic year at Weatherford High School. Texas Bank, a proud sponsor of the Kangaroo Stadium scoreboard, the sports medicine John Deere Gator, and the new athletic training complex. Texas Bank makes the commitment to our student athletes to place them in the winner's circle. Backing our kangaroos, banking at Texas Bank. Member FDIC, an equal opportunity lender. Nice drive by the uh, Kangaroos. Don Legale, how many uh, yards was that one? Well, you hit me before I had my microphone out of my pocket there, uh, but uh, I'm ready to go. 11 plays, 56 yards for the Roos, starting at their own 44. Uh, 421 in the third quarter and about a half a minute into the uh, fourth quarter before that uh, score gets put on the board. 35 to nothing for the Kangaroos, and they'll be kicking off to the Porcupines. And Mark Pierce now has three more touchdowns tonight, so that gives him, I believe, 19 for the season. And he also has a two-point conversion. McClure will kick. This one will be end over end and high to a overholt at the two-yard line for Springtown. He crosses the 15, the 20, and right at the 20-yard line is where he'll go down with 11-18 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, it looked like Mills is a little slow getting up. He could just came flying in there and uh, was a part of the, the lead uh, uh, group of kangaroos to make the tackle, but he's a little slow in getting up. He does run off the field, though. And Brett Mathis, the young quarterback for Springtown, who is subbing for Anthony Hare, who was hurt in the first quarter, has done a re respectable job. He 
He's handled the ball pretty well. I think he's had one fumble tonight. Here oh, is a right handoff, and uh, here is uh, going down Mathis. He tried to give it to his fullback, and somebody came in and grabbed both Mathis and the fullback and just held on until finally Mathis was tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Well, we had uh, Danny Merritt and, and Michael Branch combining on the tackle there, and then Jeremy McClure come in, came in at the last to finish it off. And that's what we've seen all night long, Randy. We've seen not one rude player making the tackle, but we've seen three and four players uh, hitting the ball carrier. Well, a 35 to nothing lead here for the uh, Kangaroos. And I think somebody perhaps has some blood on them, and that is uh, Keith Such. They're gonna ask him to go out for a moment. And coming in is Boney. As Keith Such goes to the sideline. Well, Craig Boney sure is a, a, a big linebacker, isn't he? Well, you know, he is very stout, and he was a lineman before this year. Here is the uh, pitch back to Cantwell. He'll get a few yards as he goes around the right side, manages the 25-yard line. He'll have a uh, third down play for the Pojo. They'll still need about six yards. Wilkie and Boney both combining on the actual tackle and uh, the left side of the Rue uh, defensive line doing a good job of, of shedding the blockers so that Boney and, and uh, Wilkie can have a clean hit on the, on the ball carrier. You know, we saw Casey Cook come in some last week and do a good job. Sean Bridges is playing tight end. For the Roos, and he'll probably uh, be in there tonight. Here's a pass over the middle, and again, Jeremy Richardson has another reception. I don't believe he's going to have enough for the first down. It's according to where they mark it, as uh, he was right over the middle that time. And uh, a nice pass by uh, Brett Mathis. And that was a good job of tackling by uh, uh, I mean, Kane Riddle out in the open field there. Uh, the, the runner or the, uh, the pass receiver made a good fake and Kane uh, bit just for a little bit, but did a good job of recovering to make the tackle. You know, with the big rush that's going on there, uh, it's good that he's getting that ball away so quickly yeah, because if he doesn't get that ball away quickly, he's going to be sacked and he's going to be sacked deep. First and 10 for Springtown. Mathis has got it, pitches it out, and this will get some yardage. Well, not much, though. A nice tackle. Coming in this time is McDaniel to stop that one. A gain of about three or four yards for the Pojo, and that looked like that was going to be a long gain. Well, Mike McDaniel showing his speed there, Randy. He closed on the runner real fast, and uh, we had Jeremy uh, McClure doing a good job of playing the uh, quarterback. He stayed with the quarterback all the way and made him uh, pitch that ball out gave Mike a good chance to come up and make a clean tackle. This is not the normal multiple attack that we see from Springtown. They don't appear to be running a, a number of plays. They're just, uh, they've got a very basic pattern here that they're using for Brett Mathis. And he'll get a lot uh, quicker and a lot better as time goes on. He's handled himself pretty good out there today. But with the loss of the, the backfield people, they, I think they just feel like they've got to just kind of work the ball downfield here the best they can, running some pretty basic stuff. Well, that uh, play going right up the middle, we had uh, uh, Scott Safford and Jeremy Day and uh, uh, Keith Such. Uh, these main, these names leave me every once in a while, Randy, <laughs> but uh, Keith Such, all three combining on that tackle. And you call them the Brothers Such, the right? Brothers Such, that's right. Third down and five for Springtown. Here is Mathis. He'll go back, and he's going to try to force a ball. And I believe it's actually tipped out of his hands by Cashin Carlisle. Yeah, that was a good job by Cashin. And, looks and like it's going to be turned over to Weatherford. Michael Branch came out of the pile with the ball. Well, he was running to his right. It looked like he was about to throw the ball, but before he could get into his motion, Cashin Carlisle just came right in front of him, stuck his hand out, and just slapped the ball right out of his hands. It looked like Cashin was going by him so fast that he didn't have a chance to just make to, to make the tackle. And all he could do was get an arm out. And, uh, and as quick as Cashin is, he got a, a hand right on the ball. And it, it popped straight up in the air. And Michael Branch landed on it. 35 to nothing. Kangaroos on top. They have the ball at the Springtown 33. And it appears they are going to uh, go 6-1 and one on the season. 4-0 in district play. 
Here is Zach Moore. He's going to throw an out pattern. And this one is caught around the 26-yard line of Springtown. Nice pass and good reception by Cole Borland. Well, Randy, the root the offensive line giving uh, Zach plenty of time to pass. And, uh, of, course, of course, Cole Borland's got a lot of speed out there. And uh, uh, yeah, Cole drove the defensive back deep into the secondary, and he just turned around and caught that ball. And it looks like Zach Moore's coming out of the game for right now, and Cole's going to quarterback some more for the Roos. Right, he caught that pass, and then he just came in and took over at quarterback, and uh, Barrett Weaver comes in and gives him a play. And here is a pitch out to the right side. Nice run by Shanahan across the 20, the 15, and Shanahan has run out of bounds around the nine-yard line. Good move, and every time uh, Shanahan gets his chance, Mark, he does something, and he showed a lot of quickness and a good cut on that run. Yeah, we had uh, uh, Daniel Connell out there leading the way for him. Uh, Daniel doing a good job of blocking deep into the secondary. Well, Coach Ross said that Daniel Connell is the man that really gave and gives a lot of flexibility to his line. He plays on both sides, you know. And so it allows the Kangaroos to do a lot of things that they would not be able to do without Daniel. Here is Cash and Carlisle with the ball across the five yard line as he hits the left side of the line and is tripped up. And they're gonna say he was down at the five, second down and goal for Weatherford. 6.20 to go in the game. They already lead it 35 to nothing. Randy, the interior of the line for the Roos right now is made up of Daniel Connell and number 51, Michael Ross, and number 79, oh, uh, Jared Nunn. Jared Nunn coming in for the first time in a while. Here is uh, Carlisle. He'll move down to the one-yard line as he goes off left tackle. Bridges is over there. Bridges has played tight end at uh, various times for the Ruse. And also, I think big uh, Brandon uh, Brown is in at left guard. Or well, Weatherford, and we're down to 540 now in the game. Looks like the Roos have just made up their mind. They're just going to punch it in here, Randy. They will come out in the uh, I formation. They'll have two receivers to the right side, third and goal from the Springtown one. And here is Carlisle, and he'll just go in standing up, and it is 41 to nothing in favor of Weatherford. Randy, we had uh, big number 66, Brandon Brown, leading the way uh, in there for him. And, and uh, Cashin got in there and uh, without him really having to, to run that hard. Well, it looked like he was just bumped. It looked like a belly bump there <laughs> as he went <laughs> over the goal line. And uh, That's it all. is 41. They're going to go for 42 here as uh, Borland will come in and hold. And Jeremy McClure is back out. He'll use that left leg. See if he can't whip another one through. Here is the uh, snap held by Borland. Here is the kick. That one is up. It is good. It is Weatherford, 42, Springtown, nothing. We'll be right back in a minute. What do you mean Growl's never coming back? Why does he get to stay up? Where do babies come from? Did you smoke marijuana when you were my age? The older they get, the more complicated the questions. Here's how to answer. First National Bank of Weatherford is excited about the 1999 Weatherford High School season. Since 1880, the First National Bank of Weatherford has provided friendly and reliable service to the folks in Weatherford and surrounding area. We wish all of the players, cheerleaders, band members, and fans success in all they do in 1999. Come by and visit with your personal banker at First National Bank of Weatherford, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Dinner, 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 dinner. 
They dress him up like a ghost and he's looking through and he, it's Halloween and he's walking around like this. My parents told me to go swimming and I was like, no. You love watching movies and Blockbuster thinks you should be rewarded for that with Blockbuster Rewards, where the more movies you rent, the more free ones you get. Plus, get a free Blockbuster Favorites movie every month. He got on top of that bomb just like it was a horse. He was going to ride that rascal all right on into where it was going. Join Blockbuster Rewards today and go home happy. We're leading 42 to nothing over Springtown. 5-19 to go in the fourth quarter. Springtown, this will assure them of their first losing season since 1980. It's been a long, good run for the Pojo, but it's going to end tonight. The kick will go back over Holtz, will uh, down it in the end zone. As you know, the Kangaroos, I think, uh, made the playoffs uh, back in 96. Well, that was the first year that Coach McBroom was here, and uh, this is the longest winning streak for the Kangaroos since 1981. And if they win next week against Boswell, that will be the longest winning streak in regular season. We'll have to go way back, and we'll have that for you, and we'll know exactly how far back it will go next week. But uh, they are strapping it in on the Pojo tonight. The Pojo, of course, so since 1980, they have been to the playoffs 16 times since 1980. Back up, please. Going to the quarterfinals many times, the semifinals, and all that is going to end tonight as they will be assured of having more losses than victories. Here is Mathis with a long run across the 40, the 45 before he's run out of bounds. But they just had too many obstacles uh, to overcome this year, Mark, and then they had bad luck go against them, and they, you could just see that uh, when they had the injuries uh, to a Webb and also Quintana, and then uh, Anthony Hare, their quarterback, that the heart was just out of the team, and they almost looked like they were going through the motions tonight, whereas uh, Weatherford, you kind of feel like they could have done anything they wanted to in this game. Yeah, Weatherford, uh, I don't think, let down at all, even after that Brewer win last week. Uh, the, the Roos really have come out and played hard the entire game. First and 10 for Springtown. They're at their own 39. And uh, here is a handoff inside to uh, Patrick, the fullback. He'll get about a yard. We're down to 440 to go in the fourth. And Randy, we've got a few uh, players in there. We've got uh, uh, Casey Cook in on that tackle. We've got Jermaine Leslie playing a little uh, defensive uh, tackle right now. Uh, Andy Cope in there uh, at defensive end and Jeremy uh, Day over on the left defensive end. So uh, some new faces in there. Everybody getting some action tonight. Uh, while it's still real meaningful. Sean, Sean Bridge is also in a linebacker position calling the, calling the plays for the defense. Kangaroos will have a huge game next week against Boswell. That will be at home. Mathis pitching out and a fumble and jumping on it back at the 36-yard line for Springtown is Blue Harms. Although Jeremy Day was after that ball, you could see his eyes were about as big as saucers there. <laughs> and... Uh, I think he was doing a, uh, a making plans to pick that ball up on the run and run it in. Mathis was uh, in the grasp of one of the ruse and he was going down and tried to uh, pitch it out at the last moment. And uh, Ruse almost had the ball there, but uh, Harms was able to uh, jump on it at his own 36. Second down and about uh, 13 yards to go, or third down for Springtown. This time it's the uh, wishbone or the uh, flex bone. Here's oh, a pass good, up good. the middle, and it is going to be broken up at the last second. Coming across was Shanahan, and down there was Daniel Cantwell for Springtown. They both went for it, and it fell incomplete at the 35 Randy of uh, Weatherford. So the ball will go over now as the Pojo will have to punt. That was great defensive pressure by the Rue defensive line. Uh, they just almost got to the quarterback, made him lo lost that ball, uh, probably a little higher than he would have liked to, and uh, also made him throw into double coverage. So good job by both ends, uh, the defensive backs and the defensive line. Griffin back to pass for Springtown, and uh, that is uh, Mike McDaniel back for Weatherford. A very high, nice punt by Griffin. Mike McDaniel will catch it and step out of bounds in his own 33. So the Ruse, they'll have another chance to add to this 42 to nothing lead. 3.04 left. Boswell Pioneers coming in. Of course, last year, Kangaroos jumped all over Boswell. 
And then we'll follow them up uh, with, uh, I think, the Azel Hornets. And then finally, Northwest could be the other way around the land. But all three of those games are going to be very important. Yeah, but the nice thing about those three particular games, Randy, is that we play two of them at home. And uh, we only have to go to Azel instead of uh, having to go to Basel and having to go to Northwest. It's always easier, or typically it's easier, to play on your home field. West 14. And Boswell over Northwest. Here is a pitch out to Shanahan again. Nice cut. Here we go. 40, Take 45. Off, He's at Here midfield. We go. And now Put Shanahan's on a run, and he's going to spin away from yeah, another man it. at the 35. There he goes. He's at the 20. 10, and Shanahan will take it all the way in. Oh, but we got a flag. Well, that was a <laughs> magnificent run by Shanahan. He made a great cut around the 40 or 45 yard line on his own side and then broke a tackle at the uh, 35 of Springtown. Well, I want you to know there's no quitting the ruse, is there? I mean, they're they're playing as hard right now as they were the first uh, few well, minutes you know, of the Shanahan, ball game. That, that, uh, if that's a drop off at all, it's not much, much of one because he is a good little running back. Well, and gonna... you hate to see that because he put out such a great effort. He has a good blocking across the front, but this uh, holding that's been the, uh, I guess you could say the only negative from uh, the Rue season so far. Yeah, but uh, I still want to, I still want to say, Randy, that I think a lot of that is just hustle, uh, as opposed to uh, sloppiness. So you're were... saying a, uh, a call because of commission and not omission, right? Well, I don't mind having first down and four yards to go, is what I'm saying, I guess. High formation. Here and off to Chesney. He's running hard, and he'll have a first down around the 45, as he is the eye back in the eye uh, backfield for the Kangaroos right now. Well, across that line, we've got uh, Joe Hosh, and we've got uh, number 79 for the Roos, Jared Nunn, uh, 66. Uh, Brandon Brown and 55 Dan Daniel Connell and also uh, Michael Ross continues to be the center for the Ruse. First and 10 for Weatherford from their own 45. One man out to the right side and the eye backfill again. Here's Chesney. It's about two yards off the left side behind Connell. And also the, the left guard, which I can't see, and I think it is Brandon Brown. We have a second down at about eight. The Ruse have it at their own 47. Time running down. Randy, 125 to go. Colt Borland has kind of turned into the Iron Man for the Ruse. When you think about it, he plays cornerback. He's the backup quarterback. He's the uh, holder on the uh, extra points, and uh, he uh, returns the punts. He's on the kickoff team. And uh, I think he handles uh, water distribution. He's a water boy sometimes. So you're saying he's a very valuable player, is that right? I would, I would say that, it sure is. Well, we uh, get another carry by Chesney. Go to the right side this time and pick up a yard. We'll have a third down play. We have probably one more play left in this game. We had uh, no prognostications by Mark Reby. Nothing forthcoming in this game, perhaps next week or during the week, he may tell us what is going to happen in the Boswell-Weatherford game, but I, I bet there'll be one of the biggest crowds in a long time over at Kangaroo Stadium next Friday night. Well, the chance to have seven wins in a row, uh, I can't imagine anyone in Weatherford missing that game. Third down, here is Borland. He will hand it off inside to Shanahan. He'll be wrapped up around midfield. Go ahead, Don Legale. Well, no, I didn't, I didn't see. You <laughs> Caught know, you with your mic down again. Yeah, I got, I got my microphone <laughs> in my pocket here uh, to write on my board. But uh, uh, what I didn't get to do before the game was share my prediction. I uh, I had written on my paper before, Ruse break through their five touchdown ceiling, 40 plus points, uh, barring a turnover deep in Ruse territory, Springtown scoreless. Well, it is all over. The uh, clock running down, and this game is finished with the uh, Kangaroos winning it. 42 to nothing. They controlled it all the way. We will uh, give you the uh, scoring plays, and then Don Legale will give you the stance. We'll be right back at Porcupine Stadium in just a minute.
dress him up like a ghost and he's looking through and he, it's Halloween and he's walking around like this. My parents told me to go swimming and I was like, no. You love watching movies and Blockbuster thinks you should be rewarded for that with Blockbuster Rewards, where the more movies you rent, the more free ones you get. Plus, get a free Blockbuster Favorites movie every month. He got on top of that bomb just like it was a horse. He was going to ride that rascal all right on into where it was going. Join Blockbuster Rewards today and go home happy. We are named Weatherford National Bank because we are Weatherford. From the rodeo to the Peach Festival to Christmas on the Square and everything in between, you'll find us there sharing in the rich heritage of Weatherford and Parker County. Come by any of our five offices located throughout Weatherford and Alito. You'll find free checking with overdraft protection, full service mortgage department, extended lobby hours, and even Saturday banking for all the services that our customers have come to expect. Weatherford National Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lender.